I pray, touch your, touch your head. Say, I pray for my mind to open. So that I may be able to hear the word of God. And to understand it in the name of Jesus. I want you to touch your eyes. Say, I pray for revelation. On all the gates of heaven on my body. My mind, my eyes must open in Jesus' name. Touch your ears. Say, I pray for my ears to open up to listen to the word. In the name of Jesus, I want you to touch your heart, touch your chest. Say, my heart is receptive today to the word of God in the name of Jesus. Say, I receive the incorruptible word of God in the name of Jesus. Say, thank you, Lord, for touching my life in the name of Jesus. I want us to just begin to pray. If you are spirit-filled, just speak in tongues right now. If you are not, just pray. Let's pray. Father, I pray. We pray. Pray for your heart to receive, your mind to understand the word, your ears to hear, to listen, your eyes to see revelation. Raka toba bolandama. Moseka Dolomonda Masaka is we are praying present worship. You can take your seats. Roboka Hashima. Thank you, Jesus. Continue in prayer. Mahuren Takabakata. Riplande Mahosekate. Mahusha Mandele Bahaka Tutumungera. Libra Halika Hosemenda. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. We bless your name. We glorify your name in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to continue. I think I taught some to greet the way they greet in Israel. Uh, the way they greet as Jewish people or maybe bid each other farewell when they say, Maya v. Isrim which means live up to 120 years like Abraham. Hallelujah. I want you to greet seven people and say in Hebrew, Maya v. Isrim. Yeah, say Maya v. Isrim. Hallelujah. Say live up to, just greet. Hallelujah. Prophesy that you are not going to die. Hallelujah. Greet them, greet them. Greet them prophetically. Hallelujah. We may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Um, sound guys, can you lift my monitors a little bit, my volume? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to be blessed today. Hallelujah. Amen. So today we are going to break limits. We want to break uh, limitations. Hallelujah. Amen. So I said there are about 15 limitations that the devil puts in Christians to keep us limited so that we don't go as far as we are supposed to go. Let's open our Bible is in the book of Exodus, chapter 8. Uh, it is what God gave me, and I'll be dealing with some of the things even tomorrow on Sunday so that we break these limits that the devil has planted in our lives. Let's open uh, Exodus, chapter 8, verse 28. So Pharaoh said, yeah, that's okay now. Thank you. Pharaoh said, I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only you shall not go very far. Intercede for me. Can we lift our hands? I want to pray. Father, I pray for your people. I pray that you may touch them in the mighty name of Jesus. 
I pray that you bless your people today and rebuke and remove all the limits that are in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, may we all shout a big amen. amen. Now I want everybody to listen. Please look up here to the pulpit. Uh, I want you to know something. That if there is one thing that the devil is afraid to see you doing is to go very far. The devil doesn't want you to go far. Now, we, we are moving with a theme, awaken, arise, advance for an increase. And we were given uh, by Apostle Humphrey as he prayed unto the Lord. A theme which is in Exodus chapter 1. Let me just read the scripture which is uh, the theme of this conference, which is Exodus 1, verse 6. And Joseph died, verse 6 and 7. All his brothers and all that generation. But the children of Israel were fruitful, and they increased abundantly, multiplied, and grew exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now they were multiplying, they were increasing until the land was filled with them. Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, look the people of the children of Israel are more mightier, are more and mightier than we. Now, the moment you become more or you start to increase, the devil gets worried. The kingdom of the devil begins to have a headache because they don't want that. Now, I want you to listen to what Pharaoh said because Pharaoh in the Bible is a typology of Lucifer or the devil. His horses and chariots are a ty and his armies are a typology of the demons, the demons or the demonic systems the devil uses when he is operating. Now, he said, look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them lest they multiply. So there are some, some, some shrewd strategies that the devil brings in the church to make sure that we don't multiply and they are not planted in a way that is obvious. Shrewdly, it means cunningly. It is done secretly. And these are areas where we are ignorant. We, we, we don't have knowledge that we are limited in those areas because the devil does it wisely in a cunning manner. So he's saying deal shrewdly. It's, it's planting certain things without them being aware that those things have been planted. And it happened. Now he says, and it happened. This is verse in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us so go up out of the land so because they were he said let's deal with them shrewdly lest they multiply lest they increase because when they increase and in the event of a war even if they join with our enemies and fight against us, they will win. Because the devil doesn't want you to be free. He wants you bound. He wants you oppressed. He wants you under his grip. He doesn't want you to be delivered from Egyptian systems. He wants you down. But today you are going to be delivered in the name of Jesus. Now, therefore, they set task masters over them to afflict them with, with their burdens, 
when you go to, uh, to verse 11, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. So the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar, in brick, and in all manner of service in the field. All their service in which they made them serve was with rigor. Now, I want you to understand something here, which is in verse 11. That whenever the devil sees there is a group of Christians or people that are trying to multiply or to increase, especially this theme, awaken, arise, advance for an increase. He, he is not happy with that word increase. That's what the devil doesn't want to hear. So he makes sure, I'm going to show you some things, before even you are a Christian, even when you are still in the world, because the devil always suspects or um, uh, he, he always guesses uh, that uh, he, the, the, there is a probability that all the people that are in the world or some people who are not yet part of us, who are not yet Christians, will be born again. So he deals with them and he puts limitations, what we call taskmasters, in their lives. So you find out some of you, by the time you showed up in the church, the devil had already put maybe a disease in your body. He had already put maybe HIV in your body just to limit you because he doesn't want you to increase. So he will make sure there are some taskmasters which are in your life. If, if you are a woman, he, he, it's very possible for the devil even to give you four children with four different husbands. And maybe you'll be suspecting, maybe you shall be used mightily of God. So he wants you, when you show up in the kingdom of God, he wants you to be carrying burdens. He wants you to serve with rigor, to serve with hardship, with bitterness inside. So that he limits your distance, your, your speed in the things of God. He doesn't want you to go very far. He, he, now, I said to, to women uh, when I, I just gave a, just a snippet introduction of what I'm going to be teaching today and tomorrow, that uh, the devil has no problem in allowing you to come to church. He has one problem when you come to church and you start going very far. The, he said, go and sacrifice. I will let you go. and He will allow us to come and sacrifice. But in Exodus 8, 28, he said, but don't go very far. So the devil will allow you to have a car. But you make sure you don't have a driving license. <laughs> Hallelujah. The devil will allow you to have a marriage, but he will make sure you are not happy in that marriage. The devil has no problem to allow you to be called a beautiful woman, but what he will do is he will make sure you don't have a husband with your beauty. So he will always limit Christians. And make sure that they don't enjoy. He will give you money, but he will make you not to enjoy your money. Now, never be deceived. Even all the people that you are seeing are rich. They are not really enjoying their wealth or their riches. They are limitations. Some of them are not sleeping because that's what the devil does. So, as a prophet, my job and my mission is to make sure that when I come... I cut by the anointing of Jesus all the limiting ropes that are on your legs so that you go very far. I want you to stand up today and declare that from today I am going to go far. Can you stand up? Shout from today. From today. I am going far. Am going In the name of Jesus. I want you to give three people a high five. Say, my friend, look at me. I'm going far. Say, I am going far. I am going very far. 
Say no more speed limits. No more distance limits. No more limitations. I want you to hold someone, hold someone next to you, shake them, say, I destroy and shake out all limits from your life. Deliver them before I deliver them. Hallelujah. Deliver them, deliver them, shake them, shake them. Say, from today, all limits are going in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Clap your hands unto Jesus. They are going to be free. We are tired of living a limited life. Hallelujah. This devil that will make you to, risk, to have a lot of food in your refrigerator, but he will give you stomach problems. We want to destroy him today in the name of Jesus. He has to pack his bags and go. Today, the devil with his mother-in-law, his sisters-in-law, his brothers-in-law, they are packing their bags from your life and we are giving them a red card and they are going out of your life in the name of Jesus. If there is something that I hate, it's demons. They have to live your life. Do you know that it's not good to live in your body with some strange, funny things inside your body? Some demons that are limiting you, they have to go. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, we, we want to talk about some few things. Now, I want to talk about what we call garrisons. Let's all say garrisons. All right. I, I want everybody, if you have got your Bible, because we want to deal with some garrisons that are in your life today. I want you to open uh, your Bible in the book of Second Samuel 23. Second Samuel uh, 23, verse 13. So we are going to pray. We'll start from verse 14. David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David said with longing, Oh, that someone would give me a drink of water from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. So the three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines and drew water from the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate, and they took it, brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink it, but he poured it out to the Lord. May the anointing of God bless his reading of the word in Jesus' name. Let's say amen. amen. Now, there was a well in Bethlehem. This well, history says it had sweet waters. And um, David was a Bethlehemite. So he knew how sweet the waters of Bethlehem were. But at a certain time, what happened is the Philistines, they came and put a garrison. A garrison is a, a line of powerful soldiers. So they say they will be in five rows, and they put the most strongest soldiers. So they will be in five lines, five lines. So whenever you hear the word garrison in the Bible, these are Philistine lines, demonic lines, where demons are guarding certain wells, certain dimensions which Christians are not supposed to partake. They rightfully belongs to us. Bethlehem was the hometown of David. That well was a well that was dug by their fathers. It was a generational blessing that they were given. It was waters that they were supposed to enjoy. But at a certain time as they were growing, the Philistines came and formed a strong garrison around that well to block 
the Jewish people, the children of God, from coming to fetch that sweet water. So there are some garrisons that the devil has put so that the body of Christ may not come and fetch certain blessings. These blessings are guarded. That's why you notice, including issues of money, including issues even of health, and so many other things, the body of Christ is limited. Billionaires are out there. And you see many Christians, including some who are preaching, they have sicknesses, they have diseases. But you'll be surprised a drunkard that drinks beer from morning to evening. They eat what they want. But when you come to church, you see Christians with ulcers. They are not eating what they want to eat. They are struggling to get money. Why? Because the devil puts garrisons. Now, these garrisons, I call them poverty lines. Now, what the devil does is this. I want you to open your Bible in, in how these garrisons are working in your life. I want you to open Lamentations. It's a book after Jeremiah. I want to deal with this, uh, these garrisons. Lamentations, chapter 5, verse 7. It says, our fathers sinned and are no more, but we bear their iniquities. Servants rule over us. There is none to deliver us from their hand. We get our bread at the risk of our lives because the sword uh, in the wilderness. Now, the, these garrisons, the way the devil is now putting them in people, is the devil realized that there is now, brethren, listen, there is what are called bloodline limitations. Now, the strongest limitation in your life, before I teach you all other limitations, it's your blood limitations. Where you come from. The Bible says our fathers sinned and are no more. And we bear their iniquities. Now, in a sin, there are four types of sins in the Bible. There is sin in general, which is the sin that you do. When you sin, you, you, yeah, it's called sin when you are sinning as an individual. Then number two, there is what is called a transgression. A transgression is when you are are omitting what God wants you to do, like tithing and so forth. That is transgression. You are not doing things God said you must do. So it's what we call sins of omission. You are omitting things you are supposed to do. So those are transgressions. Are there, it's also a type of a sin. Then there are trespasses. Trespasses, it's when you enter into places where you are not supposed to enter as a child of God. Like a child of God being seen in a Sangoma's house. That's a, you are trespassing. You are crossing a, past, a pathway. So you are, you are crisscrossing into areas that you are not supposed to. So it's called trespassing. You are, you are getting into a pathway you are not supposed to, to get into. So you must not trace on a wrong path. You must not be found in a nightclub, in a beer hall as a child of God, dancing some, <laughs> some funny stuff and you are drinking beer. And then on Sunday you show up in church and you have some hangover or something. Do you know that some people even in the church when you see them crying, it's not the anointing, they are crying about what they did yesterday night. Yesterday night, they know what they did, so they are just repenting before God. So it's called. Then there is iniquity. Whenever you see what is called iniquity, iniquity is a sin that you didn't do, but God requires it on you. It's your fathers who sinned before you were even born, and that thing entered your blood. 
and it's limiting you today because you have not done something about it. So it's called an iniquity. Now, some people have given it a terminology, bloodline cases or generational cases. So Christians, they don't know that some of the things that they are facing today, some challenges, some patterns, common patterns that are in your family, it is because of generational cases or these bloodline iniquities. Because the Bible says in Exodus, the Lord said, I will visit the iniquities in Exodus 20 of your fathers, the sins of your fathers to the third and fourth generation. Now, so right now as you are living, maybe you are now in the third or fourth generation of a certain family line of your ancestors that sinned against God. So there are patterns that you see in families that shows you there are iniquities there. Because now if you, if you check in your family, if you want to see if there is an iniquity, you see it by a common pattern, a negative pattern that is there. Now, in some families, nobody reaches or crosses 40 years. They all die before 40 years. That is an iniquity that needs to be broken. It's a limitation. Then in some family, you find out everybody dies of cancer. So it's a sign there is something that has not been addressed. So we are going to address some of these things so that they don't destroy you. Hallelujah. So some people in their family, everyone is a drunkard. In some families, it's divorces. All the girls are divorced. There is nobody with a strong marriage. It's a generational iniquity. And you go to some families, everybody is poor, is poor. There is no one making it in life. You know, there is a poverty which when you go to some families, you, you can touch it. It's tangible. You can smell it. And even when they enter your office, when they leave, they re it remains in your office. A smell of poverty. We, we, you can tell that this is not normal. Then some, they lose teeth. You lose your teeth. Can you smile at me? I want to see. Hallelujah. Everyone is going to a dentist in your family. They are all having tooth problems, tooth problems, tooth problems. That is a sign you are under an iniquity. There is a garrison of the Philistines. So these garrisons, they limit you so that you don't enjoy Bethlehem waters. So imagine when you are losing teeth at, at, at 25 and you are a girl. You are not yet married. A wedding is about to come. How are you going to smile on your wedding? So obviously you need some fake teeth all, all in front here. So it's, it's, those things can be destroyed. Some people, they wear eyeglasses. Everyone in the family has got an eye problem. That is not normal. It needs to be broken. That at five years old, someone is now wearing glasses. A child that is 10 years at primary school is now wearing glasses. Today, all the people that are wearing glasses, I'm going to pray for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to get deliverance? Yeah. I did that in our church and many people, they, I, especially those ones who wear those glasses that are very thick, <laughs> like bulletproof, sort of. I want to pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus. You are wearing bulletproofs on your, on your eyes. So we want to, to, we want to destroy those powers. The Bible says our fathers sinned in Lamentations 5, 7 and are no more. But we bear their punishments. We are carrying their iniquities. We are carrying the certain limitations. Some families, they are all prostitutes. Then in some other families, everybody has asthma. 
Now, there is a doctor who came to me and he was saying, I don't believe there is generational cases. What, what, this gospel when Jesus died for us, we were washed by the blood of Jesus. I said, you, um, you are an ignorant doctor. And I said, doctor, when people come and they are sick, don't you do blood tests? And he said, yes. I said, you doctors, we, I have gone to, I have, I have been in doctors in, 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 for consultation. I have seen them. When someone comes and they have got BP or sugar, you ask, is there anybody in your family with this? So what do you call that? He said, oh. I said, yeah, that's in the spirit. That is what is called a generational curse. It's a sickness that is moving in the bloodline. Why? Because there are some people who sinned long back before you were born. And that thing is moving in your bloodline. So, and those diseases cannot be cured. I was educating this doctor that if you noticed that BP, high BP, you can't cure it. You can only give them medication. You can't remove it. Sugar is difficult to remove. Sugar diabetes, asthmatic problems, you just give them inhalers. But I told them, us as prophets, as a man of God, I have a solution to that. It can be removed from a person. You doctors, you fail to, you just give them uh, some, some suppressants, some medications to suppress. Because those things are spiritual. They are spiritual, they are not physical. You can't remove them with medicine. You can't cast out a witch with a pill, with a panadol. <laughs> Hallelujah. It, it, it needs an anointing. It needs a man of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. So they are, that's why some people get, op they get operated. And doctors can actually see that there is something in your stomach. And they, they do scans and they say, it's there, it's here. They the person when they open the, the person they see that thing is not there and they, I, I have prayed for people who have been operated five times but the thing is not seen which means now doc, that those doctors they now need to be educated that when you see such a thing which is not in your chemistry books you now need a man of God you, that one you refer if you are a doctor to a man of God. So even in Blue or during my prayer line, I have got people coming from different doctors in the city. And when, when they see such problems, they will tell the patient that this now needs cheese, this thing. We, so I, I have many people with referral letters from doctors because they now understand because some of them I have educated them that these are spiritual things and they need to be cast out by prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There are some people who are not allowed to pass English at all level. It's a poverty line. You die. I prayed for a family where if anybody would try to pass English, they would die. I'm not joking what I'm saying. You would get sick because the devil draws lines, garrisons in your blood that you are not allowed to pass. When you are about to pass, all the demons of your family will say, yeah, 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 who do you think you are? And they will give you a disease. They will give you a sickness when you pass English so that you die with your pass and not make it. Now, even some of you here, that's why you notice in your life, everyone check this, that uh, there is an amount of money that you touch per year. It's a common level. No matter how much you pray, there is a common level of money. If you, if you try to touch money beyond that level, someone steals your money. Something has to happen so that you are below that level. So we have different poverty lines. Some people are allowed to, to have seven cars parked in their garages. But once they go to number eight, they must be sick. 
Some are not even allowed to have a bicycle in their family. It's not allowed. Not even a car. Bicycle, you die. It's a limitation. So we have different levels of limitations. Some are not allowed to touch 100,000 rands. If you touch 90,000 rands, you get sick and you start spending all your money consulting doctors until you come to 10,000 rands because that is the limitation level. You must not go beyond. So it's moving in your family and you are not aware that it is happening. So it needs someone who must stand up like you who, is, who, have, who has attended this service. You are, you are supposed to represent your family and say it will end at me. And say it will end at me. It will not go to my children. It will not go to my children's children. I, I met one lady that I was praying for in the United Kingdom last week when I was there. And uh, when I gave a prophecy, so she came and she said, you, are, you were talking to me. And uh, because oh, my mother committed, uh, died, she committed suicide. All my mother's sisters, they all died. So when she was saying that, she then mentioned a name. And I then realized that, oh, this lady, I know a story because she was now staying, uh, she's now staying in the United Kingdom, but I realized, no, it, it was in our area where I grew up. So I said, are you from this family? She said, yes. I said, you are young, you were young, but I, that time I remember, I saw your, two of your mothers killing themselves. There is one day when I was coming out of my house, one of them, they would all set themselves on fire, pour paraffin, or fuel on their bodies and light themselves and torch themselves. So I saw her even doing like this as she was burning and she, she fell into a ditch and she died there. Whilst I was watching, I was still young at primary school. The other one also died a year later, same way, same place. So I, I delivered her and she was delivered. I prayed to cut that spirit. So I said, it's not yet dealt with. I have to teach you how it's done so that it does not befall your children's children. So these are things that we want to deal with today. We want to break them. Are you ready? If you are ready, lift your hands and say amen. amen. Shout and say a big amen. Amen. Shout and say a big amen. amen. Shout, I'm going to be delivered today to from generational bloodline garrisons. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to partake the sweet waters of Bethlehem. There shall be no limitations in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Spirits of misfortune must go in the mighty name of Jesus. Sicknesses that are bloodline related, they must go today from my life in the name of Jesus. Shout yes, 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 yes. Shout glory, power, and anointing in Jesus' mighty name. All right, as I conclude on this one, when do most garrisons or these poverty bloodline garrisons or limitations, these generational cases manifest? A, a generation is described biblically as 35 to 40 years. So they have discovered that you hit a generation between 35 to 40. And once you reach 40, you are now a generation. So when you celebrate 40 years, you must write a happy birthday generation. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are now a generation in Shona, you are Zinza. You are now, because by that time, you must be having some kids. Which is now, you must have a child. Your children that came from you are in what is called the second generation of your life. 
So they are children, your children's children are in the third generation. Then your children's children's children are in the fourth generation. So whatever you are doing even now, listen. If you keep on repeating one sin for a long time, at a certain time it is a way of getting into your blood. And then it is passed to your children's children. So if you are lying too much and you are not repenting and you continue lying, when you are 30, you are lying. 35, you are lying. Up to 40 years, you still lie. It gets into your blood. At 40 years, it is a way of getting into your blood and it is transmitted through your children. That's why some of you, you wonder why you lie more than journalists. You lie more than politicians. You can craft and, and structure and create an accident that never happened. And people will believe it. Why? Because it is in the blood. You can't speak the truth. You are like those children who are caught with a sweet in their mouth. And you ask them, what's in your mouth? And they say, nothing, nothing, nothing. But yet you can see that there is something in their mouth. So those are generational cases. And they need to be broken. Now, have you noticed? Now, everyone check. When you reach 40 or when a person reach 40, you start to see they are now having blood, high blood pressure. Why? Because you are now 40, it's a generation. So these sicknesses, usually they start towards your 35, 36, 37, up to 40. You see now, you are now having sugar, which was not there. Heart problem, which was not there. Kidney problem, which was not there. And, and they will start to tell you, your uncle so and so died with that problem. Your aunt died with that problem, and it's now in your body. So someone are near 40, or they are 40 right now, you can notice there are now some certain sicknesses that are now manifesting in your body because you have hit a generation. So generational sicknesses, they start to manifest in a very strong way at 40 years. T.D. Jakes, uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes, when he reached 40, 39, he started gaining a lot of weight, a lot of weight. He, he says, I was sort of like ballooning and ballooning without control. And then Bishop William Duncan Williams came uh, to America, and he was in the hospital dying. He could not be standing on the pulpit today. And that's when he realized that, you know, he asked him, what is happening? When did your father die? T.D. Jack said, my father died at 40 with the same problem. So he was preaching as a man of God, but he didn't have the revelation of generational iniquities. Then Bishop William Duncan Williams said to deliver him, and he cut. That's when he started to regain his health and his body. And he said that spirit of uh, just... Uh, becoming big and big and big, it, it was broken. It was cut in the spirit, that DNA, and he passed the age 40 and he's still alive, preaching on the pulpit today. Hallelujah. And he started correcting other pastors who criticized generational cases, uh, teachings, yeah, because they don't understand uh, this, some of these things that are in the Bible. The spirit of lying was also in our father, Abraham. It was flowing in their bloodline. Abraham lied and he said, Sarah is my sister. And it was passed to Isaac. He also lied, Rebecca is my sister. Same lie, he was not there when the father lied. <laughs> that is, Sarah is my sister. He is lying with the same vocabulary and sentence and phrase that was said by his father before he was born. Why? Because it's flowing in the blood. Jacob did the same thing as well. And now on Jacob, it was worse. Because Jacob even got a name, Jacob, which means a liar, a cheat, who cheats others and gets cheated. 
and he was now bound more because it was even that garrison was even strengthened by a name that matched what was in his blood. And it took him to wrestle with an angel the whole night. Because if you want deliverance, you must learn to wrestle in the spirit. And say, enough is enough. Devil, you must go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There was a time I told you when I was poor, serious poverty. I had to take a chair. And I put a chair here. And I said, devil, come and sit on the chair. I said, look, I'm suffering. I'm a man of God. My children are suffering. My wife is suffering. Today, enough is enough. I am putting you in a spiritual court. And I opened the windows, the curtains, the door. And I said, now, devil, I was angry that day. You can choose any exit that you want to use. Whether the window or the door. But today, you have to go. And I went back in the name with the anger in the spirit. And I said, enough is enough. Lucifer, go, come out. Oh, today somebody has to be angry with these demons. You have to say, enough is enough. I am tired of these limitations. And you must put him in a court and you rebuke him in the mighty name of Jesus. When you, are, when you are praying against demons, you don't come with a nose brigade. I don't know, and you're certain, ah, shit, and man, girl. No, 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 no. You have to change the gears. You have to enter the acceleration. You have to be in the traveling gear tonight and say, I'm going to be free. My children are going to be free. My brothers are going to be free. Everyone is going to be free. Do I have some people ready to be free today? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And for sure, poverty listened and it left me. Do you know that devil understands one language? Do you know that language? Violence. The kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violent shall take it by force. So if you don't have that spirit like, David, like Jacob who said, I am tired. I will not let you go, you angel, until you bless me. And he wrestled the whole night with that angel because he wanted deliverance. So today, I want you to pray like we have never prayed before. Can you shout amen? amen. Can you shout a big amen? amen? Lift your hands, say, touch me today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Say, I get freedom. Say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, my question is, which is a pattern that is common in your family? You know your family. You don't need the prophet. I don't need to prophesy. You know the pattern. I think even when I was teaching, you could see that mm -mm, in my family there is this thing. It's following my aunties, my brothers, my cousin brothers, this thing. Some of your family, your cousins, everyone is a drunkard. All of them, they take drugs. They are always coming home drunk. So, you, so don't think that thing is not, it, it will not come to you. It can come. Because it's showing you that it has that potential to navigate and migrate to your children, even to your house, if you do nothing about it. So you have to do something about that thing so that it goes in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I want to touch about uh, this other thing that I want um, us to pray for. It is, because I will just give you some few things that can help you uh, to deal with some of these things. Now, the way you deal with a generational case, because I, or a bloodline limitation, there are two things that you have to do. It's, in fact, it's three. 
Number one, what you must do is when we, I shall call people who feel they need that deliverance, you use Lamentations chapter 5. You confess the sins of your fathers like it's you. So when you are coming, you say, I, we sinned against you. We visited traditional healers. We did abominations that brought iniquity. Some of you, it's because your, your fathers, they were consulting too much sangomas. So God put a, an iniquity in your family, a punishment, because they committed abominations, sins that causes generational iniquities. So you have to stand with your blood before God on behalf of your ancestors and say, we sinned, oh God. We did so many heinous things. And we, I come today and say, forgive my blood for what we did. And then you denounce those generational iniquities, those cases. And then we pray for you. Then number two, what you must also do, you must now start to tithe, tithing. Because tithing, all people that tithe are quickly delivered from the spirit of generational cases. Now, let me show you, everyone open, if you have a Bible, I want you to see it with your own eyes. Open Hebrews 7. Everybody with a Bible, please open. We, we want to get into prayer now. Uh, but I just want to teach some few things. Then we start praying. Hebrews 7, verse 7. It says, now beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. Then it says, here on, on earth, mortal men receive tithes. But there in heaven he receives them. So which means when we give tithe here on earth, in heaven, God receives those tithes. Even Levi, now I want everyone, I hope it's there in your Bible what I'm now reading. Even Levi, who receives tithes, paid tithes through Abraham so as to speak. For he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek, Melchizedek met him. Now let me demonstrate something here. All right, can I, can I quickly, can I have three people, three men, just rush to the front. Who want to come, just come, three, come, 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 and stand on top here. I want another third one. All right, stand uh, facing that direction, that direction, yeah. The Bible is saying that Levi, who receives tithe, Paid time. Now, this is Levi. Because the Bible says, the Lord said, I will also visit the good things your fathers do to the third and fourth generation and to a thousand generations. Now, when you do a good thing, God visits even up to a thousand generations, not to four. Not to four or third and fourth like sins, no like iniquities. So this, is, I am, let's say I am Abraham. Abraham, we all know, he had a son called Isaac. And Isaac he had a son called Jacob. And Jacob then had a son called uh, Levi, the 12th tribe of Israel. Now the Lord is saying here through the word that Levi, can you hold? Levi, who now receives tithe and collects tithe. Because the Levitical priesthood is the, the tribe where le priests and uh, pastors come from. They are called the Levitical priesthood. So in Israel, they were not allowed to work or to have anything. Their inheritance was God. 
Others would go and till the ground, do farming, but them were just supposed to minister. They were blessed. People are supposed to bring tithe, everything to them because they are a blessed tribe. Even the 20 billionaires who are in Israel right now, they did a trace and they noticed that the richest people on earth, including the Rockefeller family, they are traced to the tribe of Levi. Billionaires who are rich today, the Jewish people, most of them, their origins is linked to, to this family. Now, why did they got blessed? The Bible says, Levi tithed when he was still in the loins of Abraham. Before he came, when Abraham was going with tithes to Melchizedek. The Bible is saying, the more he, con that, well, that's the explanation which I want to give you. The more he continued tithing, he came to a level that he repeated consistently, faithfully and persistently his tithing discipline until it went into his bloodline. And it moved through Isaac. And it went, through Jacob, it went through Jacob up to Levi. So Bible is saying Levi was blessed by Abraham's tithe. Because then he was just still in the loins. He was in the west in the birth system. So do you know that when you are paying tithe. You are not just blessing yourself, but you are blessing your children's children's children. <laughs> Tithe is the only thing. Now listen, church. That's why the devil attacks tithe. Because tithe is the only thing that is ability to go deep down into your loins, into your waist, and it blesses children that are not yet there. It delivers your children's children before they even show up on earth. So when you are not tithing, you are doing your children's children's children a very big disfavor. In fact, you are a little witch in practice. You are actually bewitching your generations. Because of your ignorance, you don't know what you are doing. The Rockefeller family has now power to even determine who becomes the president of America. Why? Because Davison Rockefeller was a son of a bishop, a son of a man of God. If you read the history, buy that book, The Prophetic Business Principle, which I... I said it's the only one going for a thousand runs. There is a research which I did, which is powerful, of the Rockefeller family. You, I put even links for you to Google it on your own, even on, 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 on Google, so that you see the information. So at the back, we put even links so that you see that it's not just guesswork, but it's research to see what happened in this family that is now the richest family in the world with money that cannot be accounted. They say in every week, the money of the Rockefeller family passes through your pocket without you knowing. Almost everyone in a week, their money passes through your pocket. And how did they come to that? David came to his father. David Rockefeller and said, I, I want to be a president. And his father said, that is inferior, my son. You can't dream to be a president. I want you to dream big. I want you to say, I want to be one who determines who becomes the president. Not to say, I want to be a president. That's a, that's a low rank. I want you to determine who becomes the president. You, you need to. And the father said, I'm going to give you an allowance every week. And you tithe a twenty per week. Until Jesus comes. 
And you see the increase, and he started dollar. You, the father would make him work, pay him money, and he tithes a dollar twenty, a dollar twenty, a dollar twenty. He continued until God gave him the idea to produce steel, and he became the first person to smelt steel, to do those blast furnaces, and to make steel which we are now using today. And he entered the steel industry, which was uh, producing steel that started uh, making planes and all the steel material, including these chairs, which we are sitting on. It was an idea which God gave him, which was not there on earth. Through tithing, the windows of heaven are open. Now, some of you, you think the windows of heaven that are open when you are tithing are the windows up just in heaven. No, it is the windows of heaven on your body, which is your ears, your eyes, your mind, and your heart. So when you tithe, God opens the windows of heaven which are on your body. Before, you begin to think better than others. You begin to have revelation and you are no longer limited. So they open and impose ideas which are blessings. And that's how he made his first million. And he moved until he became a billionaire. And now they are into trillions and trillions of dollars. And they now have a voice in America. When they say, we don't want this one to be a president, that person doesn't become a president. Because they have so much money to control so many things. So this is how he also got blessed. And his children, a Rockefeller child today, when they are born before they see the world, or the day they see the world, they say a billion US dollar is just put as a welcome into their bank account. Just a billion, just to welcome a baby. How much do you welcome your babies? Hallelujah. And now the richest man, it was through tithing. So tithing is power to, uh, to go and uproot generational cases. Can we clap hands for them? You can sit down. <laughs> and it's there in Hebrews chapter 7, from verse 7 to 14 to, 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 to 12. Now, then the other thing that you must do if you want to deal with generational cases or these iniquities, it is by saving. Let's all shout saving. Save. You have to save in the house of God. You must do something in the house of God. Now, brethren, let me explain something to you. When you read the Bible... In the book of Genesis, let's open. Genesis 16, verse 7. God said, Genesis 16, let me just give you some few scriptures. Genesis 16, verse 13. Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees. For she said, if I also hear seen him who sees me, therefore the well was called Bia Lahai Roy. Observe it between Kadesh and Bered. Now I want you to know that whatever you are doing for God, Hagar was in the wilderness and she was surprised to see God visiting her in that wilderness through an angel. And she gave the well a name. There was a well there, the name Bia, which is the name for a well. The Hebrew word for a well is Bia. Bia Lahai Roy, the Lord of the well, or the Lord who is a well that sees what you do. And she said, I've seen him who sees me. So I want you to know that whatever you are doing for God, in his house he's seeing it. And his name is Bia Lahai Roy. Let's all shout Bia Lahai Roy. Yeah. Shout aloud Bia Lahai Roy. Yeah. Which means the Lord God who sees me. That's why there is a name in Hebrew of Jehovah which is called El Roy. 
El Roy, which means the God who sees. So he's Biala Hai Roy, the Lord who sees what we do in the kingdom, what we do in his house. Now, now let me give you something before, before I, I, I rest this issue of iniquities. When you also read, let's open Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 5. It says in verse 15, as you came from your mother's womb naked, naked shall you return to go as you came. And he shall take nothing from his labor which he may carry away in his hand. The Bible is saying you came naked. And when you die, you carry nothing from this world. Naked you came, naked you will depart. And all the works of your labor that you are laboring, whether at work, even the house that you are building or you have built or properties, cars, anything you have, there is nothing, absolutely nothing that you carry out. You are going with nothing out of this world. Where am I going to? I'm going to the point that you have to know which is the only thing that you carry out of this world when you die. There is one that you carry. Let me show you. Let's open Revelation 14. Let's open Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. It says, then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, write, blessed are the dead. Okay, blessed are the dead. So when somebody dies, they can be blessed. It's not a misfortune. There are some people who are blessed. Blessed are the dead. Who what? Who are these people who are blessed when they die? Who die in the Lord from now on? And then, yes, let's all shout yes. yes, says the spirit that they may rest from their labors. They rest from their labors and their works follow them. So what will follow you? It's your works that you are doing for God. The things that you are doing for heaven, those are the things that will follow you. So I always tell Christians that there are some people rich here on earth who will be poor in heaven. And there are some poor on earth but will be very wealthy in heaven. Why? Because they are rich in good works like Tabitha or Dorcas. Even the disciples, women, they refused for her to be buried. They said, Peter, you can't bury this woman. Check what she was doing. All these clothes, it's because of her. Can you shake someone next to you and say, do you have works? Do you have works? Say, what are you doing in the house of God? Now, when you work, your works, they affect generations. You may be buried, but your works will never be buried. That's why Nelson Mandela, whatever he did to bring freedom to South Africa, he's dead, but his works, works don't die. Works remain. They continue talking about you. Now, have you realized that even on your funeral, people will not come and say, ah, no, this one had a nice car. They say, ah, no, he had love. They speak about your works. Ah, he had compassion. Ah, he had this. Ah, we are missing. He was doing this in the house of God. Your works are the ones people talk about on your death. Why? Because that is the only thing that you carry. Now, let me do a calculation with you, and I rest this one. It will help you. I want to show you something. I want to show you how many years you have to work for God. In Genesis 5, men were dying, the Bible says, at 900 years. 600, 900. And the youth, a youth during the time of Methuselah and Enoch was 500 years. That was a youth. Then when you open your Bible in Genesis, I, I want us to go together. Let's open Genesis, everyone, please. 
uh, if you have your Bible. Verse 3, Genesis 6, the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with men forever, because they are now very sinful. For indeed, he is flesh, yet his days shall be 120. So when people started sinning, during the time of Noah, God cut our years from 900 to 120. It was heaven that said the years of men on earth are no more 900. They are now 120. So from that moment, nobody was now passing 120. Abraham died at 120. All of them, they were now dying 120, 120, 120, 120. And men did not stop sinning. Now I want to show you something. How many years are we now given as a timeline on earth? Let's open. Everyone, if you have your Bible, open Psalms 90. Psalms 90. Let's open Psalms 90. I want to show you something in Psalms 90. If you open Psalms 90, verse 9, are we there? Some just say amen, yet they are still in Genesis. Hallelujah. Psalms 90, verse 9, it says, For all our days have passed away in your earth, which means our sins have eaten our years on earth. The sins which we do, they eat up our years in the wrath and anger of God. We finished our years like a sigh because of our lifestyle. The days of our lives are now how many years? Seventy what? Years. And by reason of strength, other verses say by reason of exercise. When you exercise, they are eighty. Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. So now our years on earth is 70 years. To go to 100, it is grace. So when you reach 70, for you to reach 100, you must exercise. <laughs> you must exercise seriously. It's in the Bible. I'm not telling you from my own mind. This is a verse which says by strength, maybe you can go now. Because you have to use strength, you have to exercise because you are supposed to die at 70. So to go to 80, exercise. 90, exercise and 100, uh, it's not easy. Even with our father, General Baba Gutu, who died at 100, they said, he, it's not much about sickness. His body started just crashing. Do you know that your body, because of this declaration, it shuts like a software, a computer software that is expiring. It just shuts and it can no longer receive food. So he could no longer receive food and he had to die. But if you check, he had to do prayer and a lot of running, a lot of exercise to reach that level and a lot of discipline. So very few people reach 70 or 80. So now to help you so that you see how many years you have to have works to save. Your years just minus 70 years. Can you ask someone next to you, how many years are you left with? 70 minus, how, how old are you? So I'm sorry if you are sickest. You are now just left with 10. <laughs> to work and save God. If you are 40 years, you are now left with 30 years. If you are 35, you are just left with 35 years. In fact, it's a probability because you might not even reach. It's by grace even to reach 70. And you are playing with God. You come here, you, you are not born to come and just write notes in the church. And you go back home. You are not born to be on earth for you to eat. Go to the restroom, you eat. Restroom, eat. Restroom, eat. Restroom, restroom, eat. It's a song. Restroom, eat. 
restroom eating. You think that's what you were born for? <laughs> you are supposed to work for God. If you are in this church or in any church and you are not part of any department, I'm sorry. Because you are wasting years on earth. You are wasting years on earth. There is no reason why God must keep you long on earth when you are living like you are now already in heaven. Because he just has to take you and you go to heaven. There is a verse in the Bible which is called the mother bed verse. Let's all say the mother bed. There is what is called a dam, a dam. Do you know a dam, which is water, that is also living a life of a dam? I just want to show you that verse. Everyone open. I want now this one, I want everyone to open. Please, if you have a Bible, go to Deuteronomy 22. Go to Deuteronomy 22, verse 6. I want to show you something. I'm just showing you now. There are some people... Uh, that die young because it's God's will that he now wants them home. And there are some who die young, not because it's God's will, but it's because God is now afraid that if they continue living on earth, he might lose them. Now, but there is something I want to show you here. Verse 6, it says, are we all there? All right, we want to read together. If a bird's nest, or other version says a dam, happens, it's a bird called a dam, or the mother bird. Or if a bird's nest happens to be before you along the way in any tree or on the ground, okay? You are moving in the bush, and there is a nest by a tree or on the ground with young ones or eggs, with the mother, the dam, or the mother bed sitting on the young or on the eggs. You shall not take the mother with the young. You will surely let the mother go, and you take the young for yourself, that it may be well with you, that you may prolong your days. So God is saying, when you are walking like this, and you pass through, a bush, and you see a bed, a mother bed with eggs or with young ones. When you take the mother bed and you go with it, you will die. If you want long life, what you do is you take the younger one and you leave the mother bed. What is God saying? God is saying if you want to have long life in this church, you must be the most responsible Christian in this church. You must be the one other people are feeding from. You must be the most responsible person. That's why you notice that, I am sorry, but I'm just giving an example, but I want you to understand, I, don't, I hope I will not offend somebody. But if you have noticed, most of the times, it's pastors bearing people. Do you know that the death of a pastor is not a joke? It is, it is put in newspapers. It's pastors that are bearing congregants because of the mother bed issue. Because they are the mother bed. Your pastor is the one who prays for you. He is the one when you are sick who visits you in the hospital. He is the one who blesses you. He is the one who comforts you. So when God, when the angels of God, they come in any place, they will not lack hack the pastor. They will not take, they usually take the, the younger ones. The younger ones are those ones that are maybe not very responsible in the house. So if you don't want God to lachak you, in Hebrew it's called lachak, to snatch to heaven, you must be responsible. 
Because if the angel of God comes here, it just checks who is living like they are already in heaven. And then you are lachagged. You are taken up. So this is what God is saying. You must serve in the house. All right, can I ask you a simple question? Some who grew up in the villages, if you had those hands, you know, those that uh, produces eggs, those chickens, when a visitor would come, would you take, you will, would you kill the mother, the, the hen, or you were, t- you were taking eggs to fry for visitors? What were you doing? What do you think you do if you have got those uh, uh, chicks, chickens that lay eggs? When visitors come, do you kill the hen that lays eggs or you take the egg and you fry it? Do you kill the bed, that bed and you give it and then you have no more bed that lays eggs? What do you do? You take eggs. No, I want to hear. Can you, uh, can you give me the answer? What do you do? Isn't it you are answering for yourself? <laughs> So what do you think God does when he sees a mother bed and an egg in the church? Can you check next to you? Are you not an egg? If you are an egg. <laughs> be careful. You will be lachagged. Can you shake someone and say, don't be lachagged. Don't be lachagged. <laughs> It's L A Q A S C H La Hak. L A Q A C H in Hebrew La Hak. Which is to you will be la They will they will take you, they will snatch you. Look at them, say you, your egg type of lifestyle, this one. Shake them. Say, don't be an egg, my brother, my sister. Shake someone. Say, don't be an egg. Don't be an egg. (laughs) Did you tell your neighbor how many years you have? (laughs) Minus 70. Please tell them again how many years you have to work for God. Hallelujah. Can we clap hands for serving in the house? So, so... Now, I, I, now, are you seeing that brother there in, in green? What he is doing is being recorded in the book of remembrance. In heaven. So as they are pulling those things, it's not taken light in heaven. Don't be in a church and you are idle. And you are doing nothing in that church. Join a certain department. It's a prayer for long life. Just in church, every Sunday, you must be seen running around. Don't be seen in an egg position. You must be seen running around. <laughs> serving. If you don't have anything to do, even decide to carry the pastor's Bible, do you know that you will live? By just like what Mr. Mushud was doing to put my Bible here, God will keep him because he knows he's the guy who will carry my Bible. (laughs) Hallelujah. So find something, shake somebody, say find something that you must do. Don't be seated. Don't allow Apostle Humphrey to be the only one running around and welcoming visitors at the airport. He carries their suitcase and you, you say, God bless you, Pastor. (laughs) You need to do something. Shake someone, say you need to do something. Can you ask them, what are you doing in the church? What are you doing? Ask them, are you serious about long life? Shake them, say, are you serious? You don't give offerings? When it's time for giving, you sleep. Even present worship, you don't even lift your hand. You come late to church. You don't tithe. 
There is nothing apostle can pray about you. Do you know that some of you, if you miss church, the pastor will realize after three weeks <laughs> that you have not been coming. But there are some people whom the man of God, just one Sunday, you'll be phoning you, where were you today? Where were, because they are important. Because you'll be noticing there is a gap. There are not eggs in the house. Even if a hen lays many eggs, if one is stolen, if there are nine, you won't even notice until after some time. I think something was taken here. So you need to be active. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In our church now, people have formed groups. In our church, everyone is trying to save. Recently, some formed a group called the, uh, the there was greeters for Jesus, who greet. Another group formed the high five for Jesus. <laughs> so when you come into church, I pray for you, and then there is a group which greets you. And then there is another group which gives you a high five and say, thank you for coming to church. Thank you for coming. And people are now staying in church because of the high five guys. <laughs> high five. High five. Because they want to live long. So you do some. You, if there is no department, create your own department. <laughs> and you call yourselves high five ministry for Ignite House. And you even form a uniform, you become the leader, the HOD. And you recruit to others. <laughs> Hallelujah. So they are now noticing we now have got almost up to 50 departments. Some are now into career guidance, just guiding people in careers. And it's one of my daughters, can you stand? Ash, Dr. Ashley here. She is now leading... <laughs> She graduated at Pretoria University with a doctorate, and now she started career guidance, guiding youths on which courses to choose. And we had even a powerful Sunday when I was recapping graduates, and it's growing, and people are coming to learn from here, and it's now a team. They now have something to do. Ask someone else, what are you doing? What are you doing? All right, we want to, to pray now because of my time. But I was feeling that uh, we need, as a church, to be very serious about saving. So I said there are three things that destroys iniquities. Number one, what did I say? It's repenting on behalf of your family. Hallelujah. Number two, tithing. Number three, so when you do these three things, they get into your blood and they become a generational blessing that then blesses your children. So when you go home today, there is something that I don't want you to forget. That is your years minus 70. <laughs> that you are remaining with to serve God to have works. Then the last thing that I want to deal with uh, today, uh, and then we pray. Uh, it's a limitation that I don't want in your life, which is called, all right, let me check here my time. So it's now quarter to seven. So if I start praying for people, seven o'clock maybe, so that maybe we conclude around half eight or so, because I want to break some things. I think it's enough time for me to deal with things that I want to deal with. So uh, let me just give you uh, quickly uh, this, these things. I will just do fast. All right. Okay. Let's open Second Kings chapter 5. Everyone open Second Kings chapter 5. I will not take time now explaining some of these things so that we pray. Verse 1, it says, Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor. 
He was also a mighty man of valor. I want you to write quickly the Naaman limitation, which is the bad limitation. Now, this one will make sure that it takes you to hell. The Bible is saying there was a man who was called Naaman. He was great. Let's all shout he was great. And he was honorable among his brothers because the Lord had used him to bring victory to the Syrians. The Lord used to use this guy to bring victories to the house of God. But, let's all shout but. He was a leper. Now, why is it written in the Bible? Now, listen to me, people of God. Everyone, please look up here. Look here. Look here. Don't be distracted. Do you know that there are some sins, which I call some bad limitations, that hide under titles, and they hide under achievements and greatness. Once you start to achieve in the house of God, be very careful. And especially if you have not yet dealt with some weaknesses, some little foxes, they hide behind the armor. So there is nobody who knew that Naaman had leprosy according to the history of the Syrians. Why? Because the army guys used to wear armory, breastplate, and a helmet that would just leave this portion here of your eyes. So the only people who knew that Naaman had leprosy were the people that were staying with him. That's why the Hebrew girl is the one who was able to detect and to notice that my master, Naaman, he needs to visit a prophet in Israel, in Samaria, so that he may be healed. So when Naaman would come out, people would see his armor. But yet inside he was a leper. Leprosy is a typology of sin. So we have got people in the church with the titles, elder, title, a deacon or whatever, and you are doing something in the house of God, but you have a spirit of lust of women. But you fight your husband. So many people are coming to church, but they have buts. Now, if I want to know whether you are going to heaven or not, I don't check how you worship God in church. Because here we deceive each other. Do you know what I check? I visit you home, where you stay. The people you stay with are the ones that can tell me whether you are going to heaven or not. If I visit you and your relatives say, if this one goes to heaven, all of us, including me, we are also going. <laughs> then I will know you are going nowhere. Because people that stays with you, they know you better than the pastor. Some of you, you are deacons here, but demons at home. Little demons manifesting every day. Even your maid wonders why you are a leader in this church. <laughs> Do you know some of you, you make the name of the church to be mocked by people. The reason why some of our relatives are not coming to church, it is because of the lifetimes. Because we show our leadership prowess, victories, achievements. We show them our armory, but inside we have leprosy. When we go home, when we remove our armory, our church regalia, our church clothes, then the leprosy starts to manifest. And the people at home, they see you when you are not clothed with your armory. With your church Amari. And most of the churches in the world today, I now call them, they now do spiritual gymnastics. It's, it's gymnastics. But there is no depth. No more character. People, so even when you are saving, make sure as you are saved, you are praying. Because as you are being written in the book of remembrance, the devil can also limit you. The same brother that I praised, it's powerful, he's being written as he's wearing his green jacket. <laughs> Even they write his short prophet Caesar, 
made sure he was alive and wearing a green jacket. Death is written. But if you are not careful, brother, when it's time for deliverance, you may lose it behind the camera there. Because some camera people, when demons are manifesting, they just go like this. No prayer. And the service is over. But you are still full of demons, but you are, you are shooting other people who are being delivered. And yet you remain the same. So you must learn to save and also pray for yourself. When it's time for prayer, once you are behind the camera, you also pray for yourself. When you are in usher, as you are ushering others, you also pray for yourself. Because otherwise, it, you can die because of amari. So many people have bats here. Great present worshiper, but. Powerful singer, but. Behaves like a demon at home. Powerful this, but. Can you shake someone and say, what is your but which you manifest at home? Say, the prophet wants to deal with it today. What is your but? Naman, great and honorable, but. An elder in the house of God, but. He gossips his pastor. Powerful deacon, but. Poison others in the church from serving. So Christians, the devil allows them to save, but he makes sure they have leprosy. You know, there is a sin, that one, which when you are alone and you are looking at the ceiling, it visits you. That's what I'm talking about, which your pastor doesn't know. That one is the one the devil is going to use to take you to hell. If you don't cut it, you will go. A great prophet, but sleeps with women. Great apostle, great pastor, but fornicates and commits sexual immorality. Powerful titles. So I have noticed before I am a prophet, I must be a Christian. Before I am a leader, I must be born again. I must receive Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior before I come to deliver you. That's why the Bible says many shall say, Lord, Lord, I used to speak in your name, but they shall say, get away from me, I didn't know you. So saying, Lord, Lord, does not mean you enter heaven. So as you serve, serve with wisdom. Serve with discipline. Can we shout hallelujah? Then I want to talk about Moses' limitation. I'm checking my time now so that we start because there are things that I want to deal with as we are delivering categories. Moses, when you read, let's open our Bibles in the book of Numbers, chapter 22. All right, there is something that I want to, to just talk quickly here. So that we pray. Numbers 20. Sorry, not I wanted Deuteronomy 32. So let's start with Numbers 20. Numbers 20, verse 7. So today we are doing a lot of reading the Bible because when you want to be delivered, there must be a lot of reading of the word. He says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod, you and your brother Aaron. Gather the congregation together, speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will yield its water. Now let's skip. Now verse 10, Moses gathered, and Aaron gathered, gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said to them, Hear now, you rebels, must we bring water for you out of the rock? Then Moses lifted his hand and struck the rock twice with the rod, and water came out abundantly, and the congregation and their animals drank. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not believe me to hallow me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. This was the water of Meribah, because 
The children of Israel contended with the Lord and he was hallowed among them. Now everybody listen. Moses is about 40 kilometers. According to the history, Meribah is 40 kilometers before Canaan. Just by the border of Canaan. That's where he was at Kadesh Barnea. And now what happened was that the children of Israel came and provoked him. And God at that time came and said, because now Moses is angry and is by the border. His emotions are now out of order. And now in that moment when he's out of order, the devil had noticed that there is a powerful instruction that is now coming for Moses to make people to cross. And God came and said, Moses, at first, when you crossed the Red Sea, I said, strike the rock and water will come out. But now, I don't want you to strike the rock with your rod. I want you to speak to the rock. And what did Moses do? He called the congregation and said, you people, you are very rebellious and he's angry, he's shouting at them. Why did you do what you did? Can we give you water? And in his anger, he took the rod, struck the rock instead of speaking to the rock. And water came out. And God said, Moses, imagine this man who had done miracles from Egypt in the wilderness, leading these people, God is now saying, you shall not see the land of Canaan. You will see it from a mountain, but you will not enter it. What am I talking about? These are limitations. The Moses limitations. It's, uh, these are emotional things that we allow to grow in our lives, emotional demons of our bloodline, which manifests or which causes, now listen, some people to come and provoke you when you are near your breakthrough. I have noticed, brethren, there are demons that will raise people in the church to provoke you when you are about to receive your breakthrough. Demons can see that you are about to be blessed next week. And they will raise people in the church to gossip you so that your emotions are out of order. So they will trigger the weaknesses that are in your blood so that you overreact, you misfire when you are about to enter your Canaan. Do you know that there are people who walk out of Ignite House um, throwing their hands and saying, I'm now leaving this church when their husband is about to show up next Sunday. Why? Because those things from their families are now manifesting. Those demons, those garrisons are now being triggered. And they are triggered when you are about to enter Canaan. There is a sister that I prayed for. She was supposed to have a wedding the next Saturday. And she just uh, got uh, some group of girls who were out of order in the church. Uh, it was another church which I was pastoring some time in Harare. And uh, they did a party, which is like a fuzu party or something. I don't know why they did it. And she was recorded. And they brought a guy, a stripper, and they slept with that guy. In, they were drunk, and it was recorded. Somebody mistakenly sent that video to the family of the, of the brother. And when she was sober, she was called the next day that the wedding is cancelled. Up to today, she's not married. Because the story was moving around now in the place where we were staying. And no one wanted their sons to be married to that girl. Yet the wedding was next week. That most of the time, when you are now manifesting and, uh, some anger and so forth, you will be near your breakthrough. 
When you are now giving up, when you are now losing patience, you will be near your breakthrough. We usually fall when we are about to cross the winning line. It's a limitation. That run, Moses, help others, preach to others, deliver them. But when you are about to enter Canaan, you are disqualified. You become a bridge for others all the time. That's why some of you, you always sometimes do funny things when your name is now listed for a promotion at work. And you know that some of you have missed a lot of promotions. Why? Because you misfired a week before you were supposed to be promoted. And they canceled your name without you knowing. It's a limitation. And it needs to be broken. We get angry sometimes at the wrong time. And these things, they need to be rebuked by the anointing. You need to be delivered. There is a girl that I know, when she was about to be lobolad for to be married, she fought in a combi with a certain woman, and, and they were exchanging words. And the next week, the brother was going to introduce this sister to the parents. And when they went, as she was being introduced, as she entered the house, she realized the mother of this boy was the woman she fought with in a combi. And the moment she showed up, she said, so this is the girl you want to marry, this one. And they all started, they started fighting. I said, I don't want to see her. And it was done. Misfiring by the border. Can you look at someone and say, don't you do what the man of God is saying? Don't you manifest or misfire before the border? It's a limitation. And the devil does these things to destroy. Now, why did God get angry at Moses? Because Moses distorted a very powerful picture God was painting for us. Moses did a big disfavor for the generation of grace, in the dispensation of grace, because he, he distorted a revelation. Remember, Jesus is the rock. And he was struck, pierced by a soldier on the what? On the cross, and water gushed out. So you don't crucify Jesus three times. You don't strike the rock twice. The rock was struck once, and water gushed out. And next thing, what you do to the rock, you speak. You don't strike, you confess Jesus. You confess, you speak about the rock. So God wanted to show us that that rock which he struck was Jesus and it released water. And now when you want it to release life, you want salvation, you confess, you speak. You don't strike for the second time. And Moses distorted that picture. And God was angry because he tempered with something spiritual. So sometimes, because of our demons and these weaknesses, we distort certain things God is trying to build in the church. And sometimes we come in head on, even with the men of God. When he's saying, let's build, let's build, it's something God now wants to draw, a picture which will save many people in Pretoria. You, your demons manifest, and you start fighting that project. So it disqualifies you from your breakthroughs when you have such behavior. Now, do you know that Moses' anger was bloodline weakness? When you read Genesis 50, Moses' father, Levi, killed a man. He murdered. That's, and God said, cursed is Levi in Genesis 50 because of your anger. And Moses also killed an Egyptian. Because it's in the blood. His father killed him, he killed. Then God made him to be a prophet. 
And he would speak with God face to face. Coming into the presence of God. But there was no day Moses talked to God and said, God, I'm talking to you as a friend talks to his friend. Please deliver me from this limitation of anger in my family. This is the same limitation which manifested this garrison and it stopped him from entering the land of Canaan. He just saw from afar. So you can come to church. You can see God face to face. But do you have a day like this when you approach your bloodline issues? When you seek deliverance with all your heart? So Moses was supposed to have been delivered by God himself, not by men. Because he had the opportunity to talk to God face to face like a man talks to his friend. So sometimes we miss deliverance moments because of this. So we need to pray. Hallelujah. Can you shout amen? amen. Can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Can you shout Jesus? Jesus. Shout power. power. Shout glory. glory. All right. Now we now want to enter deliverance. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Can you shout glory? Shout Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, there are things that I'm going to be praying for, but I just have to obey the Holy Spirit. I said I'm going to do it very fast. We'll be doing group by group, but I can't leave this one, uh, which is my last one. Please just be patient because when I want to address issues, I make sure that I do what God has told me. Please don't be impatient. I just want to deal with stuff. All right, that's, this is the last thing, and straight away we get into prayer because I have to dre address this one. It's my last one. Let's all open Second uh, Samuel. Everybody, please open your Bible. Second Samuel. So I said the Moses limitations, these are limits that attract or provoke people to trigger hidden emotional problems or generational emotional challenges in you at the verge of your breakthrough. They cause you to sin. You are disqualified by God from entering Canaan. But there is another one which I want to talk about and we pray for it today because we now want to work now uh, for our, our lives. I want you uh, to open second, it's called the Mephibosheth Limitation which I want to address today. This one, that's why I made it to be the last one, because I want everyone to listen now, please. I know your mind is now getting tired. Hallelujah. Can you just say hallelujah? hallelujah. Can you stand up? Stand up. I want you to refresh because I have given you a lot of things. Because I am an LP when I'm teaching, we go and we go. Hallelujah. Yeah. But I have to stop now. I can sense you are now getting tired. And you now want your deliverance. Deliverance comes when the word has watered your mind. Demons, do you know already, before we touch you, demons are already shaking in the spirit. Because of the information which you are receiving. Can you say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say, I receive, I receive the, grace the grace of God. I just want you to greet about five people. Say, are you being blessed? Are you getting anything? Ask them. Ask them, are you getting blessed? Or you are sleeping? <laughs> Say, are you getting blessed? Hallelujah. All right. Now let's conclude. Let's conclude. Sit down. Sit down. Because I want your mind to be fresh to get this one. Verse 4, 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 4. Jonathan, Saul's son. He had a son who was lame in his feet. He was lame in what? And he was how many years old? Can you shout aloud? Five years old. When the news about Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel, and his nurse took him up and fled. And it happened, I want you to check this, as she made haste to flee, that he fell and became lame. And his name 
was Mephibosheth. His name was what? Mephibosheth. All right. Now verse chapter 9. Let's go to chapter 9. Verse 7. So David to him, said to him, because he wanted to show kindness for Jonathan's sake. So he said, is there still anybody in Jonathan's family so that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And they said, there is a guy called Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth was called before the king to come. And David is saying to Mephibosheth, do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan's sake. Because there was a covenant between David and Jonathan uh, that they must support their families no matter what will happen. For Jonathan, your father's sake, and will restore to you all the land of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall eat bread at my table continually. Then he bowed himself and said, what is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as I? Now, this I want to explain I wanted maybe, all right, let me use my Bible. Now, before you show up in the house of God, everybody, I want you please to look up here. Before you become a Christian, the devil, because this one I want to help even parents that are here, because it's even happening to your children without you being away. He's putting that Mephibosheth limitation in your children. Before you show up to the kingdom of God, when you are still young, in around five years, six years, or seven years, the devil makes sure that the nurses... The Bible is saying there was a nurse that was carrying Mephibosheth. So I want you to look from Mephibosheth's uh, point of view or from Mephibosheth's side. Mephibosheth is maybe this Bible. He was very relaxed in the hands of the nurse because this was a guardian. And he expected this nurse to take care of him because he was a baby. But what happened, the Bible says she stumbled on a stone and dropped Mephibosheth. And he became lame. Okay? Because he was dropped by a nurse. Then when time came for him to show up on the table of, of kingship, because the devil knows that Mephibosheth has royal blood within him. Do you know that even the devil knows that you have the royal blood of Jesus in you? So when you are still young, he will make sure that a guardian somewhere, somewhere along the line drops you. Now, now, there are so many people that are looking at me here who were dropped when they were growing up. And how does the devil do that? How does he drop you? It can be a comment. Someone can just come when you are five years, seven years, and you say, ah, and your father is not there, and say, you two girls, you, you, are, you are very ugly. Your sister is beautiful than you. Already you have been dropped. That's why we have got, and it can happen, another one will come and confirm the same thing. That's why we have got women who cannot even look at themselves in the mirror. They can't even do makeup. Because they believe they are ugly because they were dropped by a certain relative. That's why I don't want people to just come and comment about my children. You have no right to tell my children, you, you are handsome more than this one. You, you are this more than this one. And some of you, your parents divorced when you were very young and you were forced to choose between the two. You were dropped. That's why even teachers can tell today whether you are coming from a good home or not by your behavior, your confidence. If you have no confidence, they can tell that this child is coming from a house where her emotions are being dropped by the behavior of the parents. Some of you, you grew up with your stepmother who used to mock you, to abuse you, and you were dropped. 
Because for you to make it in the kingdom of God, your emotions must be well. That's why I wrote that book called Emotional Healing. Because many people are not sick spiritually. But they are sick emotionally. Because they were dropped. Things were said. Your family maybe was the poorest of all and you were being mocked as you were growing up. Some you were raped by someone, a, a nurse, a guardian, a parent that you had, uh, you know, you, you, that you had given your life to and you were expecting them to take care of you, but they dropped you. Because these are people who are supposed to carry you, embrace you in their arms, but sometimes they let us go down and they drop us and we get lame. So by the time you show up in Ignite House, you are already lame spiritually and emotionally. So this is what explains the behavior that pastors are trying to deal with in the church. That's why it's not easy to pastor. Because all the people you are trying to pastor, most of them, 90% were dropped before they showed up. Pastoral is the diff most difficult job on earth. Because you have to deal with all emotions. So even when you see a sister, a brother in the church who behaves in a, in a certain way, please forgive them. They were dropped. They were dropped somewhere, somewhere. Some of you cannot stand in front of people to just give a short speech even on a wedding day. Why? Because you don't have confidence. Some along the way got divorced. You were dropped when you were young. You tried to marry. You gave your heart to a man and that man disappointed you, divorced you, left you with a baby. They ran away from you, spoke bad things about you and you were dropped. And right now, you are in church, but you are bleeding inside. So, this is what is happening in the body of Christ today. I remember I grew up in a place in Zimbabwe called Chijanj. It was one of the most poorest places in Mavuku area, Harare. So, you know, these places, I don't know here whether... Uh, Tembisa or what, I don't know, maybe areas in South Africa, maybe where there are shakes or something like that, and you are a child coming from those areas. So we were being mocked at school, and the teachers would say, those from Chijanje stand up, and, uh, because Chijanje, it is a name of a fruit called Chijanje. It's a, it's a fruit that you find, I don't know in English, its name. So they would say, those from Chijanje who eat Majanje, and, and they would sing a song and mock us. You know, it was destroying me inside. And worse off, my family in the Chiza family was the most poorest family and are being mocked at school. Then, before I was Form 1, my father died. When I'm supposed to go Form 1, my mother had, no, had nothing to do because she was not educated. So she would come here to South Africa, work, sell, do and what, what, and try to make ends meet to send us to school. So she ended up enrolling us because no relative was helping us in social welfare, where social welfare government funds were paying for me. So you are being mocked, you are from Chishanj. Your family is mocking you. You get into the classroom, the teacher says, all those who are from social welfare, who are being paid for by, because and the whole class would laugh. We were called the social welfare children. And I have got, I had uncles that were alive. They couldn't assist my mother. And yet I am supposed to be a great prophet, a great bishop, a preacher. So the devil is dropping me because he knows there is a time when I shall show up. But when I show up, I will show up with lameness. And when I come at the table for me to enjoy, I will look down upon myself and say, how can God use a dead dog such as me? 
Because I was dropped. So inferiority complex and rejection that you see some people secluding themselves in the church and lacking confidence, it was planted as they were going up. As they were in their upbringing when they were still young. Because the devil knew that they would show up at the table of royalty. And he makes sure before you show up to be who you are, he cripples you. He allows certain relatives to drop you. And you come, you have no confidence. So I remember when I bought my Mark to that car. If that car was to be questioned, it will tell you it traveled. Because when we got it, the whole family and my mother and others, yeah, it was now a team. I visited all my relatives who were mocking us. And I would park my car. I would not come out. I would hoot, beep, 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 so that they come out. And so that they see. And I come out. They say, yeah, because they used to call me Bule, blessing, Bule. And uh, are you now the one driving? And I'll be holding the keys. Yes, uncle. <laughs> I am now driving such a car, you know, and you can test it. So do you know that there are some of you today who are doing business, working very hard at work, not because you have a passion to work, but you have a point to prove. In your mind, you have relatives that you are arguing with, that you are fighting with, that I will make it. So it's not just working, you are working hard, but you are not yet free emotionally. Because you are answering, you want to answer them. A free person is someone just doing business with a passion. But many people, the reason why some of you get educated, you read books, putting even your feet in cold water, is because you are in your own battle with relatives. You are not free. You need healing. Because you were dropped in your life. So I was doing those things. Yet I was not free because there was something I was running away from Chishanje. I was running away from the Mokari. I was doing things, but I was not free inside. So it takes deliverance for you to be free from some of these things. So it was not my fault. So even my mother said, did you visit that one? Visit the next one. I said, you know, I went to that one. I visited all of them to show them. I think that's why God said, now give that car. <laughs> because he knew it was now under abuse now. <laughs> but it, it was not my fault. I was behaving like that because I was dropped. So we do some of these things in church. That's why nowadays, if I hear this one is a bully in the churches, what, 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 what? I don't fight people. I will call you into my office. First of all, I want to check how was your upbringing. Because I want to know the source of your behavior. Why are you behaving like this? Sometimes don't judge people or misjudge them before you know where they are. They are bleeding. If, especially if I see someone with pride in the church. Pride is inferiority at its highest level. Do you know that all people who are proud were dropped? Because when you are trying to walk like this, you are extending your height. Why are you not walking with your foot on the ground? Because you are not that tall. You are, there is someone, a child crying in you, so you are, you, are, you are hiding that child in bragging. Because you were hurt. Angry people. It's protection. They are trying to protect the small heart that they are left with. So they have to be angry so that they, they, they cover that heart so that it's not destroyed. Do you know that when your emotions are touched, your psychic motors are touched, the nerves are touched, your body was created in a way by God that it is what is called the self-mode system. It 
uh, it produces a hormone that goes and tells your mind that enter the safe mode and it creates what are called panic buttons. Panic buttons. Especially when you are now an adult. So, so some of you in your house, when you see, when you say something, your wife reacts. Do you know what is happening? You are now pressing the panic buttons. Their body tells you they now want to drop you again. Protect yourself now. And she starts to fight you. No, you can't do that to me. What she's trying to tell you is that you can't drop me like the way I was dropped. So some of the fights even in marriages today, it's these panic buttons that have been pressed and the alarms start to go out. We, 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 So when your wife is complaining, hey, don't touch, hey, you, you, yeah, yeah, it's alarm systems. We, we. Because when a panic buttons are touched, the alarms, they start to ring. So you need to sit down with your wife because it's alarm systems that are there which are now, which are now ringing. Why? Because she developed panic buttons when she was young. That's why you notice someone can withdraw from a present worship team and say, even, I will not, even if I have practiced, I will not sing again. Because what they are saying is that this present worship team are now gossiping me. They are now mocking me like I was done. So your body will tell you that sit down. Because they can't drop me again. So all the behaviors which pastors are trying to deal with in the church are because of this, this dropping that I'm talking about. That happened very few people in the church were not dropped. We were dropped in different ways. Different ways. And we need to be healed. You need to forgive your uncle. You need to forgive your stepmother, your stepfather, your auntie that said things that some were dropped by teachers at school. Do you know some of you were supposed to pass mathematics? Because you trust a teacher, you know, or a lecturer. But when they come and they say, you, you will never pass mathematics. You believe it because this is a man that you have given your life about mathematics. So if they tell you you are not going anywhere, you are dropped. Not because you were supposed to fail, but a teacher dropped you. So there are so many things that are in us. Not because we wanted or we applied for them, but they were dropped. Some, as I said, parents divorced. Or some, your father ran away. You don't know your father. You are even trying to ask your mother, who is my father? You don't know. She's refusing to tell you. You don't know your identity. And you are in the body of Christ. So how do you function properly when your emotions are out of order and you don't know your identity? So we come to church. We sing. But when we are alone at home, and you are now alone, some of you, you will be crying in the evening. You, you try to show yourself like you are strong in, in front of the church when you come, or you are singing, or you are doing something. But at home, when you are now alone in your own blankets, there are voices that are speaking to you. That you are, you are nothing. And you start to cry on your own. So many Christians, before they come to church, they shed their tears because they were dropped in a bad way. And some life continued to drop you even up to today. So today we just want to pray for people. We want to pray for people so that they get healing. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you so that you get healing. Because if you are not healed, you will not be bold, you will not be strong, you will not be confident, you will not be courageous. Because there are these things that fight. Now, that's why when a pastor tells you next week you are presenting something, or you are, you are preaching, or you are the one teaching, if you are not yet healed, they, that's why you hear some people say, ah, 
Ah, you want me to preach? Ah, pastor. Ah, no, pastor. Ah, no, no, no. Give another one, pastor. I say, no, my son, you are a powerful preacher. My daughter, you are a powerful singer. I say, ah, no, next time, pastor. Thank you so much. Or maybe you accept, but for two weeks you won't be sleeping. Because you'll be imagining all those faces looking at you. It's not because you can't stand in front of people. But what makes you to struggle to stand is because of the people who dropped you. You were dropped and you became lame. Because we are supposed to go to heaven with, complete, with a complete body, a complete soul, and a complete spirit. So that's why the Bible says, may your whole spirit in Thessalonians and your soul and your body be sanctified and be kept complete in the Lord Jesus for the coming of our Lord. Because we will miss Jesus or his second coming if our souls are not healed. Can we stand on our feet? We now want to start to pray. Can you lift your hands say, Lord Jesus, I receive my deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, I forgive those who hurt me when I was growing up. Who mocked me? Who dropped me? I'm not supposed to be like this. I pray, O oh Lord, for your grace and your power and your anointing in the name of Jesus. May your power touch me today. May your grace touch me today. May you heal my soul in Jesus' mighty name. Can we clap our hands unto God? <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I have... Can I have people who are saying, Prophet, I need healing. I was dropped in a bad way. And um, I think I need healing in my life in a serious way so that I can be able, if you were describing me, please uh, come quickly to the front. I want to start with you before I pray for everyone else. You, you are saying, I was dropped. I was dropped. I need some healing. I need some healing just to come to the front. Come to the front. I was talking to you. Rikashi Mandiakatai. Because it's a limitation which must be broken. Because you can't become great if you don't receive healing. So I have come here as a prophet to pray for you. Because it's very pathetic sometimes when I I think because I went through the same. It took me time even to have confidence to stand in front of people. You could not be having a prophet like me if it was not God who healed me. Because I couldn't even hold this microphone. My hand would just start shaking on its own. Yet I had potential to teach the word, to preach the word, but I could not release what God had put upon me because I was dropped when I was young. So some of you, you have great destinies. You are great people. You are supposed to go very far to do big things. But the devil made sure before you show up, he drops you. So I want you to pray, say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lift your hands, say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I pray today. For my, heart, for my heart, for my soul, for my, soul, for my, emotions, for my emotions, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I, pray healing, I pray for healing. I was dropped, I was dropped in, my in my upbringing. There are demons that caused my guardians, that caused people, relatives, parents that I had trusted my life with. In my upbringing, at my early stages of life, to drop me. And I feel sometimes worthless when the kingly table moments appear. Say, Lord Jesus, 
So heal me, Lord, from this low self-esteem. Say, heal me, Lord, from this inferiority complex, from the harassments, the violence, the emotional abuses, the post-traumatic experiences that I had to go through in my life is now appearing, Lord, crippling my, my, my growth. I now pray that today, touch your heart, say, I pray today that your anointing goes down deep into my soul and heal me, O oh God. Bandage my soul from the wounds that I received when I was dropped in my upbringing in the name of Jesus. Now I want you to cry with your soul and pray to God. Hallelujah. I want you to pray and say, Lord, I'm receiving healing. There is an anointing right now. Begin to pray. Pray with your soul, not only with your voice. Father, I pray for all these people. I want you to release all those emotions in the spirit right now as the anointing is healing you. In the name of Jesus. Maraka hunda kabagada. Yes, continue praying, continue praying, continue praying. There is an anointing healing people right now. Heal, heal. Oh, yes, heal, heal. Oh, my God. Heal this woman. Heal this woman, oh, God. Heal her in the name of Jesus. Yes, may God heal you, may God heal you, may God heal you, may God heal you. Yes, heal your emotions in the name of Jesus. I will be laying hands now. Heal, orabakasha, kata, kata, kata. Deliver her, oh God. Deliver in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be healed right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Lord, heal here, heal here, heal here. Be healed. Rakasha katala. Lift her up, lift her up. Yes, God is healing you. God is healing you. God is healing you. Yes, you went through a lot. But today is your day. Today is your day. It's being released. Yes, come on. Yes, out. Yes, come out of it. Out of a body right now. Lose it, lose it, lose it, lose it. Manda katotoro bobo. Mama, you are being healed today. May God touch your soul. Heal, oh Lord. Heal, rakashi man. Darakata. Heal, 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 oh Lord. Heal him, heal him, oh God. Heal him, heal him, heal him. Heal him, heal him. Rakakaka. Heal him, oh God. Yes, you are being healed right now. Heal, rakasha kata kata. Heal, oh Lord. Heal these emotions. Heal this sister. Heal this brother now. Heal them, oh God. Yes, be healed. You are being healed. You are being healed. I rebuke the power. I rebuke the power. I rebuke the power. I rebuke the power. Yes, touch it, oh God. Marunda Kashakata, can you lift this sister? Can you, can you lift, lift her this man? You are being healed today. It's your day. It's your day. It's your day. All of it is going. You went through a lot. Yes, I can see the abuses. I can see the words. I can see the, the environment. It was hostile. But the Lord is healing you now. In Jesus' name, come out. Yes, come out. Come out of here. Come out. Come out, come out, come out, come out. Lose, 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 lose. Lose them, lose them all. Yes, people, continue praying. There is an anointing before I even touch you. God is loosening you. God is healing. Raka, Osha, Bagata. Touch, oh my father. Touch. Heal, heal right now. Heal right now, oh God. Mahunda, Ureda, Baba, Heal, oh Ladia, Kashebada. Be healed. Be healed, be healed. Let all the emotions be healed right now. Yes, God is healing here. God is healing here. There is more anointing coming. More anointing. More, more, more into your emotions. Let it go down. It's okay. Because there is something happening. Leave here down there. Yes, God is operating your emotions in the name of Jesus. Don't disturb you. Mahuka, husha, kalabada, bada. Touch! Touch! Yes, come out! Out, 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 out. Go, 
Go out right now. Marika Usha Prahata. Esha Pakata. Repaka. Mosenda Katuma. Mulebra Handia Masa. O Lord, heal it, heal it. Lift it up. In the name of Jesus, something is going out because it was limiting you even from doing certain things even at work and in your life. Yes, the Lord is saying, from today you are now going to be free to be who you are supposed to become. To be, to be the one that will even fend for your family. You are a great woman and God wants to do many things in your life. But this upbringing, this background, yes, 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 touch! Heal! Come out! Come out of it! Come out of it! You grip of the enemy. Loose it now! In the name of Jesus, free, free a heart, free a soul and a spirit. In the name of Jesus, come out, come out, touch. May you be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed today. Be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed. Yes, heal your emotions, heal, heal your, oh God. Manda katara baba, bitterness, 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 go. Unforgiveness, unforgiveness, come out. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Anger, lose, short temper. Raka, shemandia, ho, hosa, ta, 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 ta. Out, out. Yes, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Come out now, out. Out, fire. The fire of God heals you. Come out! Out, 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 out. Come out, you demonic limitations of Mephibosheth. Out in Jesus' name, Rapakasha. Come out in Jesus' name. Fire in the name of Jesus. Fire, loose. Fire, go. Heal, oh God. Touch this man. Heal his soul. Touch, touch, mama. Be touched by the power. Yes. Yes, touch the Lord. You are being healed now. Yes, yes, everything is coming out. Yes, everything is going, it's going, it's going. Be healed right now. Malanda, lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it. My mother, Holy Spirit is saying, today I'm comforting you. Doors are going to open in your life. Everything is being removed. Everything. There are so many disappointments. Your life was full of disappointments. Oh, Rababa, people you trusted your heart with, they gave you back your heart bleeding. They stepped on it. But I pray for healing. Lord, Lord, heal this woman. Heal her today in the name of Jesus. Come out in Jesus' name. Loose in Jesus' name. Come out. Rabakata. Come out. In the name of Jesus. When I pray for you, you can go and sit and pray on your seat as I go to the next category. Rupakata. Heal people. Touch them now. Touch. Touch it. Touch it. Touch it. Touch him, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Heal. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed, be healed, come out, come out, come out, loose, loose in Jesus' name, loose everything of the devil, every emotion, go, everything which is not of God, come out of him, loose him, loose this man, loose Lord, out in Jesus' name, come out in Jesus' name, loose come out of him, come out in Jesus' name, wrong emotions out of this man. Lose him, lose him, lose him, lose him, lose him. Yes, you are being loosened today. It's your day, it's your day. Out, let your emotions be healed. Yes, God is releasing the grip of the devil, it's going now. I see anointing. Yes, anointing is yes, yes, anointing is breaking that grip. The grip is being broken. The, break, the grip is being broken. The grip is being broken. The grip is being broken. In the name of Jesus. Rebuke the grip. 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 I rebuke the grip. I remove the grip. We remove the grip in Jesus' name. 
We remove the creep. Come out. Come out. 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 Forgive. Forgive, says the Lord. Forgive. 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 Today, release. 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 It's your day to release. Forgive that abuse in Jesus' name. Lucy. Lucy. Come out now. Out. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Yes, you are being healed today, 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 today. Yes, today. Yes, you have rejection. Rejection is going. Sometimes you feel like just being alone without even, so you feel like people are taking your space. Yes, the Lord is saying, I'm healing. I'm giving you confidence from today because you are supposed to win souls. The Lord is releasing you in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, yes, be healed. Be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed. Be healed, be healed. Be healed, be healed. Just go, just go by the prophetess there. I feel she needs to, to pray for you in the name of Jesus. Father, pray. We pray right now. Loose in the name of Jesus. Mandi karakata. Malabala bakata. Repakata. Loose in the name of Jesus. Loose in that. There is a lady that was wearing brown, brown, uh, it's a brown, uh, is it a trousers or a, a, a trainer or something like that? Where are you? Who was here? Who was wearing a coffee brown or something? Come, 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 come. Roba kashia bakata. Monda rababa. Yes, yes, come. Molenda lava hushabada. Yes, also go at prophetess there. I feel there is something that must be removed from your life. In the name of Jesus, you are still being delivered. Boraka hute keshima. Mondera baka hute rabada. Loose them, O God. Loose them, O God. Touch him. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. 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 Be healed. Be healed right now. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Lord, we pray for emotional healing. Be healed. I command you to come out. Be healed. Come out. Come out. Forgive, forgive, forgive. Lose them. Yes, loose, 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 loose. Today is your day. Yes, it's your day. It's your day. It's your day. Free emotions, oh God. Yes, you are being free. 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 In Jesus' name, you are being free. Yes, you are being free. Out! Come out of them. Loose them. Loose them, loose them right now. Loose them now. Loose them right now. Loose your people. Loose them. Loose in Jesus' name. Loose. 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 Loose them. Loose them. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed, mama. Be healed. Be healed. As I touch you, something is happening in your soul. Be healed. Yes, you are being healed. You are being healed. You are being healed for whatever you went through. Yes, God is healing you. Come out. Out. Out right now. Loose it. Come out. Come out. Everything of the devil. Loose. Come out. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus. Out right now. Come 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 out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Loose, 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 loose them. Loose, 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 loose. Bada, bada, bada. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out in Jesus' name. Go, Rakatotoroboda. Come out. Lose your people. Lose them right now. 
Loose them right now. Loose them right now. Loose them right now. Loose them right now. Loose them. Loose them. Loose. Loose them. Loose them. Loose them. Shabakata. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We are praying right now. Loose in Jesus' name. Loose them. Loose everyone that was dropped. Be healed today. Be healed the same way I was healed. May you be healed, sister. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed right now. Be healed. Raka Shabakara. Renda Labadarabada. Now we want to get into a, a serious moment of now uh, delivering people from generational cases of the bloodline. Hallelujah. Yeah, I think I still have some time. Uh, it's now 8 to 8. To eight. So I, pre I, I want to finish before half past 8 o'clock so that tomorrow we can come early to church. Hallelujah. Uh, so I want to pray for people in the name of Jesus Christ uh, who are saying, I have got garrisons that I was talking about, iniquities of my family which are following us. Some maybe it's a spirit of death. Some maybe it's a sickness that is moving in your bloodline, in your family. Or it's a generational pattern that you know this one, it must go. You are saying enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Today you, you are saying it must end at me. It must not continue. Yes, Amandima, Kalia. The Lord is saying, I'm going to remove the chains. Now, people of God, when I was in prayer at the hotel days, I was praying for this service. The Lord showed me a revelation that do you know that there are some people with the chains in their blood? We only know prisoners who are chained on their feet with shackles and with handcuffs on the hands. But I was shown a vision of some people here who have chains that are in the blood. It's a spiritual, a spiritual prison which came because of the abominations or the sins of our forefathers. And our families are limited today. So the Holy Spirit is in serious business tonight because he wants to free you. And for sure, as you pray with trust and faith, you are going to see after now, you will not be affected by that thing which is affecting your sisters, which is affecting your family. You are going to be free. Chains in your blood must drop on the altar. Can you shout amen? amen. Shout yes. yes. Shout yes. yes. Now, I said, you pray standing on behalf of your bloodline as if you are the one who did it because you carry that blood so as long as the spiritual world sees the blood of your of your family you you are punished because your blood is iniquities so we want to remove them then i said number two tithe meticulously tithe addictively consistently, faithfully, consistently from today. If you had a tithe or a money which is not tithed and tithe the money at home on Sunday, bring that tithe. Start to tithe from tomorrow. Bring your tithe in Jesus' mighty name. So I'm going to pray also after this, I want to pray for firstborns. All firstborns, if you are a firstborn, I spoke about firstborns yesterday and I hope you carry it uh, a seed, whether you have a child that is a firstborn, I want to enter that dimension to break demons that follow and attacks that follow firstborns who broke their mother's mat matrix. The first one to break the matrix is always challenged.
by the spiritual realm. So we want to dedicate some festivals. Even if you are a festival, you can bring your own redemption, dedication offering. Because God says, all the festivals are mine. They must come to me. Second born, God doesn't mind. Third born, no, no, no. But a first born, there must be a high priest, a prophet, a man of God that must give you to God. And when you belong to God, then those limits, they fall down. They crumble on the floor. So many festivals are struggling. Look around even in your family and see what festivals are going through. So you need deliverance. You need to be delivered. A lot of attacks on them. You need to be delivered in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. But today we are starting with what God is giving us. Now I want you to lift your right hand and focus on the cross of Jesus. He died so that iniquities may, can be removed. It was one of the reasons why he went on the cross. So that these generational cases of sicknesses, diseases, the asthmas, the cancers, the ulcers, the sugar diabetes, all these things that doctors can't treat as I was teaching. They can only pacify with the medication. medication. They cannot remove them. But today, they must be removed. If your family members were not passing 60 years, you are going to pass 60. If they were dying before 40, you are going to go to 70. Can you shout amen? amen. Some, their family members, they die every October, October, November. It's a month that they know we mourn someone. It's a curse and it's being broken today in Jesus' name. If girls were not being wedded or married, you are going to be the first one. I decree and declare, can you shout amen? amen. Shout amen. amen. In the name of Jesus. Move from yes dimension to amen. Shout a big amen. amen. Shout an amen that shows you trust in God. Shout amen. amen. Now say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I receive your deliverance. I come before your throne with my blood, my family blood. In the name of Jesus, the blood of, mention your surname. In the name of Jesus, we sinned against you. My ancestors sinned, my fathers sinned. They committed abominations before you, which brought punishments to us who are in the third and fourth generation. According to Lamentations 5, verse 7, which says, Our fathers sinned and are no more, but we bear their punishments. Our life is full of labor full of hardships we get water a price we struggle to make it in life according to lamentations chapter 5 joy is seized in our family father free us from these bondages in the name of jesus from these iniquities let my life from today be full of breakthroughs. I now lift my hands to heaven, to the throne of God. And I say, forgive us. Forgive my blood. Forgive my family. For we sinned against you. I look unto the cross. Wherefore comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. In the name of Jesus, begin to help me, O oh God. From today, I denounce these iniquities. I denounce these Philistine garrisons, which were in my blood. I am going to fetch the Bethlehem waters. I will partake of the sweet waters. I am breaking through the Philistine 
garrisons, the poverty lines. In the name of Jesus, I say enough is enough. I break through like the mighty men of David who broke through the Philistine garrisons. And they went and took the water from the well of Bethlehem, the spiritual well, and they brought it to David. Today, I fetch this sweet water and I bring it to my family. I bring it to my children. In the name of Jesus, everyone shall partake of the life of the waters of Bethlehem, the house of God. In the name of Jesus, every water that rightfully belongs to me, every well, every blessing, today I break through the Philistine garrisons that are in my bloodline and I fetch that water. I take of the life of the blessings that are in the spiritual waters of Bethlehem in the name of Jesus. I receive the anointing of the mighty men of David. Today, I become a mighty warrior for my family. We are going to fetch the waters of Bethlehem in the name of Jesus. The healing waters, the deliverance waters, the life-giving waters, the transforming waters in the name of Jesus. I rebuke sickness, I rebuke poverty, I rebuke all demonic patterns, garrisons in our family, limitations in the name of Jesus. Come out, come out, come out in the name of Jesus. Say, I break you. Do like this with your hand. Say, I cut you in Jesus' name. Say, I cut her in Jesus' name. Before I pray for you, I want you to pray for yourself. Say, I, there is an anointing moving already. Say, I cut. Shout, I cut. Say, today, I begin to pray like I have never prayed. I am praying now in the name of Jesus. Say, out, 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 out. Use your hands. Say, I cut you. Yes, pray, pray, pray. Yes, cast it out right now. Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, you are moving right now. Come out. Yes, pray, pray, pray like never before. Open your mouth. Begin to cut it. Use your hand right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, there is deliverance happening in your life. You are being set free from these bondages. Sickness is going. Disease is going. Every power, every limit, every demonic pattern. Come out. Yes. Holy Spirit. Let your anointing fall on your people right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Come out. Receive right now. Receive right now. Yes, command it, command it, command it, command it. Be violent, be violent against it. Say enough is enough. Enough is enough. It's going, it's going, it's going. It's going in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Set your people free. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Not by mighty, not by power, but by the spirit. Those demons are going out, 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 out. Command them, command them, rebuke them, denounce them, refuse them, kick them out, kick them out. If you were given food in a dream, it's coming out of your stomach. Those who were given the limitations in their dreams out. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Out, 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 fire. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Rabaka kaka kaka. Shabaka ta 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 ta. Bo 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 here here. Those who are here, look at me. Lift your hands right now. 
Yes, receive your deliverance. Here, here, here. Can I have some praise and worshippers in front? Fire! I break. I'm now coming now. Yes, receive, 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 receive. Come out. Come out, come out, come out. Lift it, lift Fire! I break the garrisons. Fire! Fire, 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 fire. Come out, come out, come out. Go, 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 go. Come out! Come out! Yes, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Loose it, loose it, loose it, loose it. Out! Out, garrisons! Come out! Garrisons, come out! Garrisons, come out! Come out, come out! Out, 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 out! Fire! Fire! Fire, fire, fire. Come out. Garrisons, go. Out. Fire. Pray. Continue praying as I come. Fire. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost. Out. Yes, come out. Come out. Come out. It's going. It's going. Sicknesses are going. Power. Yes, you are being freed tonight now. Free. 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 Out. Touch. One touch is going. One touch is going. Come out. It's going, it's going. Break all the garrisons. Break all the garrisons. Break all the garrisons. Fire! Yes, they are going. Come out, come out, come out, come out. Come out! Out, 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 out! Rabaka! Lucy! Fire, fire! 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 Jesus! You lose this. You come out. Yes, go out of it. I break the power. I break it in Jesus' name. Fire, fire. Yes, come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come on. Lose it. Yes, you are being free. Receive, brother. Your life will never be the same from today. Yes, you shall not suffer. What your family is suffering, we break it today. Jesus is there. Come out. Out. Loose. Loose. Every high Loose. Every strong This man, loose, 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 out, come out, come out, come out, come out, he's going, cut his sons, go, come out, out, fire, fire, come out, go, 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 go. Every creep is going. Every creep is going. Every creep is going. Shaba. Fire. Loose. 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 I break the strongholds of the devil. Come out of the valley. Come out. Fire. Fire. Go, go, go. In the name of Jesus, yes. Free, free, free. free. Go, 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 in your blood. Loose. Loose. Fire. Loose. Fire. Fire out of this. Come out of his life. You are free. Loose. Yes, loose. Yes, out. 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 Whatever he gets in a dream. Out. Out. 
out in the name of Jesus. Out, 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 out. I grieve. I grab the intestine. I now break the yoke. Heavy burdens. Fire. Break. Jesus. Be healed. Touch the family. Out, God is Go. Go. Lift her, lift her, lift her. It's being broken. Come out. Yes, come out. Out right now. Lose her from today. Let her be free. Go. She said, out. Every heart is must come. Right. Loose, 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 loose. Loose, 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 loose. Out. Let's go. Go. Out. 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 Out, out of your body. Out. Out of your body. Out. Out right now. Out. Out of your body. Come out. Garrisons. Lose her. Lose her. In the name of Jesus. Out. Yes, go. 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 Out. Go. Go. Fire. Fire. We rebuke everything. From today, it has no more power. From today, out. Yes, go. 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 This woman, you carry sons, you have no power. Out! Fire! Fire! In Jesus' name. Fire! 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 Bring him here. You overcome. You overcome. Be healed. Be healed. Everything, every curse. Spirit of death, every seizure, epileptic seizure, mental challenge, every sickness, fire, come out of it. Lucy, let it be healed from today. Let him begin to do things that he was not able to do. I free him, O oh God, from today. Thank you for touching him. In Jesus' name. Touch. In the name of Jesus, every garrison go. Every garrison. Every garrison go. Every garrison go. Fire. 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 Go. Jesus, be broken. Let it be free in the name of Jesus. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Jesus. Be broken. 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 Demons that wants a miscarriage. No miscarriage. No miscarriage. No abortion. This baby in the womb shall live. You can touch the child. Lose this one. Yes, fire. No operation. No operation. No operation. She will give birth to this baby well. In Jesus' name, you are free. Out. 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 In the name of Go. Go out. Out. Okay. In Jesus' name, loose. 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 Name of Jesus. Fire! 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 Go! In the name of Jesus, I break the yoke. Come out! Yes, go! 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 Yes, go! Yes, out! Come out of here now. Lucy! 
Lose it, 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 lose it. I break the power. Yes, come on. Fire, 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 fire. Yes. Garrison's book. Garrison's out. Garrison's book. Fire. Come out of it. Come out, Garrison. Out. Fire. And it, 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 it. Shop. Garrison's go. Garrison's go. Garrison's out. She's free from today. Out. Garrison's go. Garrison's come out. Garrison's come out. Garrison's go. Yes, out. Out. Out, 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 out. In the name of Jesus, lose, 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 right now. Let him be free. Out, out, fire. Come out, come out, garrisons. Come out, come out, 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 out. Lose, lift, lift, fire, fire. I break. Every bloodline limitation. Yes, yes, yes. Out. Out. Go, 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 go. 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 Be free. Be free. Be free from today. Yes, you are free. Be free. In the name. Free. Come out in the name of Jesus. Go right now. Garrison's go. Garrison's go. Garrison's go. Fire. Fire. Garrison's out. Come out. Yes, go. Out. Out, 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 out. Out. Fire, 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 fire. Fire, fire, fire. Come out. We are rebuking everything. In the name of Jesus, every garrison. Every garrison. Every garrison. Every garrison. Every garrison. Every garrison. From today, I break the power. Out. Lucia, let her be free. Out. Come out now. Fire! Yes, go! Yes, out! Out! Come out! Come out! Come out! Come out! Go! Yes, out! Yes! Yes, go! Go! Jesus! He rebuke you! Loose! 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 Out! Fire! Shakarabakatarabada! Father, we are praying. In the name of Jesus, touch! Loose! Loose right now. Fire! Rakasha. Out. Out. Fire! Come out of it. Loose it. Loose in Jesus' name. Loose now. Loose. You in Jesus' name. Fire. 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 Loose. 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 In the name. Let her be free. Let her be free. Out. Come out. Come out. Come out now. Out. In Jesus' name. Go. Out. Out. Out in Jesus' name. Come out. Fire. Loose. Loose him in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Loose him. Loose him. In the name of Jesus. Glory Hallelujah. We, we want to get into uh, some of the things we will do them tomorrow. There are things that I touched about Moses' limitations, the bad limitations. So some of the things I will continue tomorrow to deliver people. There is still time. Hallelujah. 
because we want to finish a little bit early. So I want uh, first bonds. First bonds come. I will conclude with first bonds. Hallelujah. Please don't come empty handed. Try to make sure you are holding something. Hallelujah. Get an envelope and put a seed. It's called the firstborn redemption seed. So you don't come empty handed. If you don't have it today, bring it tomorrow. You just write whatever you are going to give. Because you don't get Jesus. During the time of the Bible, they would come with a turtle dove, uh, a, a goat or something, and uh, some other things that they would bring to dedicate firstborns. Now, we are talking of something. Listen, that was done even to our Lord Jesus by his mother, Mary, and his father, Joseph. In the New Testament, this is not uh, an Old Testament thing only. Yes, it was then the Old Testament where God would say, all the firstborns are mine. But Jesus honored the same thing. The Lord Jesus who died for us was a first fruit of all uh, the, the, of, the crea of creation. And he was offered in the New Testament era. And God never said it's an Old Testament issue. My son is in grace in the New Testament. No, it was done. If you read uh, when Jesus was dedicated because he was a firstborn. So he showed us the example. It's about revelation. It's there in Matthew and Luke. Hallelujah. So I want to pray for you. Yes, firstborns, first fruits. Those, the Bible says anything, whether of an animal or of a human being, that breaks the matrix of the mother. The first one to break the matrix belongs to me. So especially some who were even dedicated, it's worse, especially if you were dedicated. But some maybe were snatched, you were saved, but most didn't escape because of our family backgrounds. Some even you were cut, uh, those cuts, those traditional tattoos which they cut and things were applied on you, a goat was given and you were, you were dedicated. Now there is one day, last two months, I was called into a hospital in Bulawayo. There was a baby uh, a, that was uh, struggling to survive in the ICU. And uh, pastors had gone there to pray. There is even a prophet who came all the way from South Africa, a young prophet, to pray for that baby. Nothing happened. So it was now around 12 days, and this baby was on oxygen tank, dying. The doctors had given up. So they have called me, those pastors and the prophet. They said, prophet, you are our senior prophet. Please come and help us. Because this baby uh, is dying. And uh, uh, it was, a, I think, a child of another pastor or something like that in Bulawayo there. So I went into the ICU because I was busy. Then when I arrived, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, this is a firstborn. I said, is this a firstborn? And they said, yes, this child is a firstborn. I think it was a girl. And the wife was crying, prophet, pray. So in the spirit, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, this child was born, this woman was taken to her mother's side. And that one was even dedicated with a goat. There was a goat that they had to bring and she was, they dedicated this baby. So I said, I'm seeing in the spirit that you paid $35, US dollars, to get a goat to dedicate this firstborn. She said, yes, yes, yes. I said, all of you in this family, right now, I'm standing, doctors are there, we are in the ICU, nurses are looking at me, and I said, can you collect right now an offering double the money of the goat? 
and they one of them ran outside brought some money they joined i was waiting god said don't pray just let them bring the money and i i they brought 90 us dollars they managed to bring so there was a lady by the side also with the child you know that look that all oh, these pastors have come to get money they want the people's money you could see the doctors and i took the money put it into my hands and i said this money i am a priest i now want to do what the bible uh, god revealed to me i move around even delivering firstborns sometimes when i preach that message you people will be manifesting and when you go you investigate you see it will be firstborns manifesting all over the place and i said you doctors i know you have given up but i'm praying now so as i was holding the 90 dollars praying that lord i'm now giving this child to god this firstborn the child started shaking on the bed. Uh, 10 days or 12 days old baby removed. The, those things, uh, the baby was removing, removing those things. And the doctor looked at the machines and said, ah, the oxygen is coming back. Ah, the child. So they had to come now as I continued praying, not laying hands, just holding and dedicating that firstborn. And deliverance was happening. And the baby was healed there and there. There and there, my elders were there. They brought that child. The child was discharged from the ICU the same day. The heart, the lungs, everything opened up. And deliverance happened. Hallelujah. Amen. So I just want to pray for you here. I know what I'm talking about. And I know God is going to deliver you. And all the challenges you are going through, attacks you are going through, are going to stop from today. In the mighty name of Jesus, shout amen. amen. Move from yes dimension to amen. Shout a big amen. amen. Shout with some trust and faith for your deliverance. Amen. amen. Now can you lift your envelope, lift your envelope. Hallelujah, lift your envelope. Father, I now bring firstborns that are here, O oh my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I now dedicate them to the Lord. I hand them over to Jesus as you spoke, O oh Lord God, that all festivals of animal, even fruits of vegetables, of crops, they belong to you. The festive fruits. The first fruit to be reaped, the first outcome, the first result, they are here, O oh God. They belong to a heart, to the number you possess. The Lord God, who is number one. The Lord, a heart, there is no number two. You are number one. And these are also number ones in their families. They represent your position. They represent your number, a heart in the spirit. I now bring them to you, O oh my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as you say it in your word, that they must be brought to me. I now, as a man of God, stand before your throne, O oh Lord, and I say all the firstborns represented here, some who are not here, who are being represented by their mothers, by their relatives, Oh Lord, and some who are redeeming themselves, I now pray from today. And I say they are now dedicated to you. They are now redeemed. Whatever challenge or suffering they were going through, I decree and declare that it's over from today. Let them begin to prosper. We loosen them into the, oh Lord, zone of liberty, the zone of freedom, the zone of grace, the zone of multiplication. Let them awaken, let them arise and advance for an increase. No more limits today. No more attacks no more demonic attacks no more moving in circles no more regression and degression no more moving backward or reverse oh lord they no more reverse they will not be drawn back they will not be pulled back from today i cut all the cords of limitations i now decree progress increase 
multiplication. You are going forward from today. Covering upon your life. Protection upon your life. Blessings over your life. Rika shakabakata. I want you to open your mouth and begin to thank God. Open your mouth and thank God. And say, Lord, I thank you. For I am now dedicated. In the mighty name of Jesus. Moses, continue praying as I come. Now I'm just laying hands on you. Now as firstborns, I will just lay hands and declare redemption upon your life. Redemption in the name of, continue holding your envelope. In the name of Jesus. Redemption. No more suffering. No more suffering. No more suffering, sister. No more suffering. Rakashaba. Redemption. In the name of Jesus. Come out, demons of festivals. Come here. Come here. Come here. Demons that follow festivals. Lose it. Lose. Lose. Redemption. Lose. Redemption. Lose. Redemption. Lose. 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 Redemption. We dedicate you. Lose in Jesus' name. Lose in Jesus' name. Redemption. Redemption. And come out, demons of festivals. Yes, redemption. We dedicate you to Jesus. Lose, lose him, lose him, lose him. Redemption. Let him prosper beyond measure. Redemption, redemption. In the name of Jesus upon you. We dedicate you to Jesus. Yes, demons of festivals. Go. Lose it. Redemption, redemption, redemption of festivals. Redemption, redemption. Come out, demons of festivals. Out, out, out out of it. Come out suffering. You have gone through a lot. Go! Demons of festivals. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. I break your power. I lose it to prosper. 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 From today, it's over. The creep is going that demon in Jesus' name. Father, I free you. Yes, I free you. In Jesus' name. From today, it's broken. You shall prosper. You count money. You live long in Jesus' name. Yes. Free. Free. Yes, free. Yes. 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 I free you in Jesus' name. You are freeing them in Jesus' name. Free. In Jesus' name. Out. Come out, demons of festivals. Demons that follow festivals. Out. Fire. Fire burns you. The fire of God burns you in the name of Jesus. Fire of God burns you, you demons. Come out, leave these ones. I redeem them to God. I dedicate them. Loose. Loose. Loose the festivals. Loose it. Out. Out from today. Can you lift it? Mandaraba, daraba. Yes, that, that behavior, that you, and bondage, and sicknesses, suffering, failing to break through at school, and in, come out, loose, out, fire, in Jesus' name, from today, power, yes, out, 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 fire, 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 out right now, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, out, demons of festivals, out, out, yes, it's going, it's going out, it's going out, that spirit, it's going out, it's going out, it's going out, I burn it now, I burn it, I burn it in Jesus' name, yes, no more suffering. You had to carry all the burdens of the family from today. It's over. You are free. Out. Free. Come out. 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 Fire. Out. 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 Demons of festival. No more struggles. Yes. No more delays. No more struggles. No more delays. Yes. No more struggles. No more delays. No more struggles. No more delays. No more attacks. In Jesus' name. A healthy body. Thank you. I dedicate this child to God. In Jesus, this child. Thank you, Lord. Be dedicated to the Lord. We rebuke. We rebuke everything. Come out. Yes, out. Fire. 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 Lose Demons of festivals. Yes. No more suffering. Lift it. 
There is something going out of you. Yes. Breakthroughs were failing to come. You were moving in circles. Yes. You were failing to make it in life. All your siblings are making it. Except you. Why? It's demons. They must go today. Today you will make it. A fire. 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 No more struggle. Yes, no more struggle. She's being freed today. From today, progress in your life. Prosperity, breakthroughs, testimonies in Jesus' name. Father, we redeem this baby unto you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Be redeemed in Jesus' name. Redemption, fire. Redemption, fire. Redemption, fire. Redemption, fire. Redemption fire. Redemption fire. Fire. No more struggle. No more struggle. No more struggle. Redemption fire. Redemption fire. Redemption fire. Fire redemption. Power. Redeem them, oh God. Redeem the festivals. I bless them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' No more demonic attacks. No more demonic attacks. In the name of Jesus. No to demonic attacks. We redeem you. In the name of Jesus. No to demonic attacks. Yes. No to demonic attacks. No. No demonic attacks. No. No. No demonic attacks. Rus. Rus. Come out. Fire. Yes, go, 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 fire, 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 demons of festivals, go right now, Lucy, in Jesus' name, fire, redeem, redeem, no more struggles, no more struggles, no more struggles, no more struggles, no more attacks. No more struggles in Jesus' name. No more attacks. No more struggles. No more attacks. No more struggles. No more struggle. No more suffering. No more delays. Fire. 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 No more struggles. No more delays. Fire. 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 Rabakadaba. Loose. Loose them. Loose them today. Loose them. In the name of Jesus. Fire. Shakadaba. Fire. 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 In the name of redemption. In Jesus. Redemption. In Jesus' name. Redemption fire. Redemption fire. Redemption fire. Redemption fire. Redemption fire. Come out. Out. Out, out, out of here. Loose this festival. You demons of festivals, go, go, fire. Out to receive now. Redemption fire. Redemption fire. Redemption fire. Fire, fire. Redemption fire. Come out. Come out, loose. Yes, in Jesus' name. Out. Out. Redemption fire. Redemption fire. Redemption. Redemption fire. Fire. I dedicate this into Jesus. To Jesus. Redemption fire. Fire. Redemption fire. I redeem you. No more struggles. No more limits. 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 In the name of Jesus. No more limits. No more limits. Yes, I redeem this baby. I redeem. Redemption fire. Redemption fire. Redemption fire. Redemption fire. Redemption of this baby. In the name of Jesus. Redemption. Redemption. Redemption fire. 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 Father, we pray. Hallelujah. We want to collect offering now, but I just want to give uh, people, I wrote your prophecies uh, that are here. I will just give. Um, very few people here and then others you take your books uh there is my machisa where are you can you come machisa do for something then all right then there is mulanga mafunga dr favorite uh, 
must come to the front. I want to pray for you. Then there is Lufuno Makidi. Then there is Trilu uh, or something. Love. I don't know if I'm pronouncing well. Lusa Mashakatini. There is uh, Oritonda Shandukani. You can come. Then there is Uhone Nechifefe. Afuna Afunuaho Shandukan. And Ifi Lukuto. Is there Ifi Lukuto? You can come to the front. You must be in there. All right. I will quickly pray for you. Can I have Afuna or Shandukan? Where are you? All right. I have prayed for you, and in the spirit, this is your word from the Lord. I hear the Lord saying, the Lord was saying, this girl shall be a great engineer. I see a singer, a, C a CEO, a director of a very big business holding. I see a great leader in you who shall sit on high chairs in life. I have prayed for wisdom. I also have prayed for a blessing of favor, strong marriage, university blessing, and grace in the future. So it's now sealed and done in the spirit. So I prayed for five things that will be significant blessings in your life, promotions and favor, grace and happiness, wealth and riches, a strong marriage and wedding, long life, and a healthy body. In the name of Jesus. Father, I bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Lord. We glorify your name. So keep this book, read it, and pray uh, with that prophecy inside. In the name of Jesus. Then, uh, where is uh, I don't know to pronounce. Forgive me some of the vendor names. Hallelujah. Um, now the Lord said... Read Mark 16, 15 to 20, Luke 4, 18, and pray. I see in the spirit a gift of exhortation and encouragement on you. You shall be a great counselor and teacher of God's word. The Lord said you are also a gifted soul winner. You must win souls. So I see many souls, girls, that shall enter heaven because of you. The Lord said you... You, you, have, you shall have understanding of people and their plights and problems and challenges. God shall empower you financially even to take care even of orphans, the less privileged because it's something that is in you to take care of, of uh, this less privileged. God has made you a hard worker, a tiller of the ground, a faithful person. So you shall be full of bread, favor, and long life. Poverty shall not come near you. Fear not. The Lord said you shall have a strong marriage. And I prayed for you. So it's sealed in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, receive the grace of this prophecy. Let no demon touch it. And many more other things, Lord, that you shall reveal about your life. This is just a snippet of who she is. There are so many things God will confirm in your life. Hallelujah. Then, Oritonda Shandukani. Where is she? She's not here. She's not here. All right. Um, all right. You can stand for her. The Lord said she's a blessing from God. I see the Lord shall use this child in the church, in his house. And Ortonda shall have a powerful spirit of prayer in the respect of God's word. I see God give a wealth, favor, and good friends. She shall have love to bless 
also uh, those who are suffering in the society. I see a spirit of giving and love and a welcoming sweet heart of ushering a spirit on her. So you sh she shall be a teacher uh, of so many things in life to many people, a warrior in prayer, that one it repeated, and shall be a blessing to people. So if in university level, this child will be affecting many people with a God-fearing heart. So Lord, I thank you for this child. In the name of Jesus. This child shall be a blessing to all of us. In Jesus' name, you shall see it as we go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Lufuno Magidi, where are you? Lufuno. I have prayed and the grace of strong marriage has been released. Uh, wedding, weddings in your family from now. Many people are going to benefit with the prayer that I did. The Lord said, celebrate in faith as you read Hebrews 11 and James 2 and pray. Let's clap hands for her. All right. Uh, where is Ndanga Maf Mafungu? All right. As you mature in the Lord, I see God putting a spirit of comforting others. The Lord said, you shall be a peacemaker in your family and church because sometimes they lack peace in your family. Uh, you shall bring unity and those divisions, as you are maturing, they shall disappear. You know what I'm talking about. Hello? Amen. Yeah, so God is giving you a new heart of mercy, hunger for righteousness. And read Matthew 5, 1 to 11 and pray. The Lord is also removing sickness, spirits, and diseases that were among you, your people. Uh, it was brought by witchcraft. So the Lord is crushing it in Jesus' name. Free them, O oh God. Let them be free. Witchcraft be broken from this family. In the name of Jesus, it's, she, they are free. Thank you, Holy Lord. Mandufo, where are you? All right, you are an intercessor. You are a prayer warrior. And you must develop yourself in that spirit. God shall use you to bring a lot of people through prayer. So I want you, if there is a prayer ministry, join. I don't know if you are doing it. So I see wisdom being given to you, even to answer young girls. They will gather around you. So I saw you like answering all their questions with clarity and boldness. Say, pray for this gift which was hidden in you to grow and read the verses and pray according to what I have written there so that it develops because they shall come to you for counsel. So you must be read in the spirit. So there is that spirit which, that's why you wonder why people that are troubled, they just come to you for advice. Hello. And you wonder why you, because they are attracted by that which you don't know, which I am revealing to you. So make sure you develop it in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, uh, maybe the last two. Uh, you, it's uh, Chiluva. All right, and Lovu. The Lord said, I will raise you as you mature to be a kingdom financer. Do you know what is a kingdom financer? To support the kingdom financially. You are a giver, naturally. So as you mature in the Lord, in the word, God is putting a spirit even of loving your enemies loving your enemies, those girls, some of them who are secluding you, and the Lord is saying, and his word is going to be more and more. He's giving you even keys of the kingdom. So you shall uh, start to experience even breakthroughs. So I saw also a demonic attack of witchcraft and hell. The Lord was saying, which wanted to snatch some people of your family, it shall not prevail. So the Lord instructed me to pray. So I saw authority uh, being given to you to bind the devil at a young age. Even some of the people when they get sick, God was saying, tell you to bind the devil in the name of Jesus. And they shall come to Christ because of seeing some of those things in your life. So even if a relative comes, and you have leg problems or something, ask, ask, can I pray for you? 
begin by faith, touch those legs, you will be surprised. The testimonies that are going to come, may God bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. I thank you, Holy Spirit. If he, all right. Uh, read Ezekiel 47. I see a river of water flowing towards you. So I saw water like on a dry ground, on an earth. And I heard a voice saying, I'm now pouring my restoration, refreshing presence and power on Ifilukuto. I'm going to release enough fire around you as a jurao. And uh, there were demonic attacks, some coming when you are asleep. The Lord said, I am rebuking, removing those things. The Lord is now about to satisfy you with water. So I saw someone also with a barren womb, barren womb in the family. In your family, God is making that person fruitful in the name of Jesus. The barren womb is being made fruitful. So I hear the word of the Lord that even in 2024, there will be fruitfulness in your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Moranda Rabakashia, Lusa, Mashakati. The grace of financial breakthroughs has been poured November to April 2024. You shall laugh more in 2024. I see God giving you an Isaac. I see laughter. So you were like laughing. And God shall make all people hear this coming testimony, which I'm seeing coming to you, to laugh in the name of Jesus. And I gave you, according to this chapter, Genesis 21, 1 to 7. Read this chapter uh, and pray. Now, uh, the Lord told me to tell you to do something crazy. That after reading that chapter, at your own, maybe if you can close the door or close the curtains, you must laugh on your own. Hallelujah. Yeah, you must just laugh for about two minutes or three. Hallelujah. Amen. And as you'll be laughing, the Lord said he's going to break limits. He's going to heal you. He's going to lift you. He's going to promote you. But it's something that doesn't need reasoning. Hallelujah. So just go and do it in the name of Jesus. There is a day when bees came at my house. It was witchcraft bees. We, they tried to spray them. And the Lord said, laugh. Laugh with your family. So I took my wife, my children, because fire brigade had failed to remove the, those bees. They were by the gate, so we couldn't go out. And I started tickling them so that they laugh. We were laughing, tickling my wife, everyone. We laughed for five minutes. Guess what? When we went outside, the bees had gone. They had gone because they were by the gate. So for hours, we couldn't go out. So sometimes God makes you to do crazy prophetic things. So there are so many prophecies that I have written because of time. I can't read all of them. But if you know, you submitted a book. Uh, some of you, God revealed so much deep things, except this one, I think. So I'm still around. Uh, if you want, yeah, there are so many things. If I had time, I was going to release some of these prophecies. So anyone who surrendered your book, you can still get... Uh, so usually, I, I just do that in my spare time to make sure that I write uh, prophecies and I sign all books uh, of people that buy this book. So don't just keep this book for the sake of prophecy. Read. They said if you want to keep knowledge and information from an African man, put it in a book. They will never read that book. So please... These books are very important. Keep them in your library. There is a time you will look for this book. I was talking to our pastor Humphrey. He was saying there is a certain book he lost some time to someone. And there was now a need for him to read. He looked for it. He couldn't get it. So these books, even if you have this one called The Power of a Name, there is a time when it will matter. This information, the devil doesn't like it. Do you know that we were not going to have the Bible if it was not written down? All those testimonies could have been lost. We were not going to know what Moses did. So 
this is serious. I have a powerful library and I read, I keep myself in the presence of God. So okay, how old are you? Ask someone next to you, how old are you? Now, if you have never, if you have never read books that are more than your age, you are joking. You haven't started. So if you are a business person and there are books that I am releasing for business and you want to grow in business and you ignore that. So when I bring these books, I must not go back with them to Zimbabwe. Some people must grab them. Because when I go, we have, you might not find some of these books because they always, I wrote 30, but imagine I brought 15, but some, we can't print them. So get this info. The highest level of deliverance is information. So that's why I gave you a lot of information, one hour, 30 minutes. So when we then move now, it flows because you are now receiving with understanding. So we cannot teach all the things. That's why we put them in the books there. I am a doctor of theology and a prophet. So I have so many things to teach. So God said, put them in books so that people benefit in the comfort of their homes. So invest in information. I don't mind whether a book is 20,000 runs. If I want that information, I get it. As I conclude, because I'm, I'm teaching you something, Matthew Ashmolo was failing to run a church in England. For years, he had less than 10 people. And then God spoke to him that go and buy all the books of men of God that you admire. He flew to America to buy T.D. Jackson's books, Crefro Dollar's books, Mike Maddock, I think it's five preachers. I listened to his testimony. He went for reading classes, just reading and to read sentences. So he said you would read about two books per week, very fast, and he finished them. And then the Lord said, now I can give you a mega church because you will not destroy my people. Now you have information. Because information stretches your mind. And his church, as you know, KICC is one of the largest churches which is in England by books, not by prayer, by just reading. May we clap our hands unto God. So get these books and we pray for you. Let me pray. Father, we thank you for your people. You have blessed them. You have delivered them. And we thank you, O oh Lord, that their lives are not going to be the same. O oh Lord, even tomorrow, you are not yet done. You are going to continue teaching people, giving them revelation and delivering them. In the spirit, they are going to prosper. They are going to multiply. There is nobody who shall not increase in this church. Oh Lord, there will be a surge of increase. Your people have awakened by revelation. And they are now arising. And they are now advancing. In Jesus' mighty name, can we thank the Lord. Let's clap our hands unto God. I, I want you to stand up. Everyone stand up. Hallelujah. Can you sit down prophetically? Sit down. Then say, I am arising. Say, I am awakening. Can you arise? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Sit down again. I want you to do it prophetically. Our theme, say, I am awakening. Touch your head. Say, I am awakening. Can you stand up and say, I am arising. Can you run, move forward, say, I'm advancing in increase. Yes, just run, just run, run somewhere, run somewhere. Do it prophetically. Raka shakataba. Freedom, freedom, run. Run, run, run like a crazy person. Run like a crazy prophet in the Bible. Run all over the building. Run for your testimony. Run for your miracle. Shakara Pakatai. Yes, we are advancing. Yes, we are increasing. No more limitations. No more limits. In the mighty name of Jesus. Rakata speaking tongues as you are running. Speak in tongues as you are prophesying. Yes, declare your blessings. Declare your prosperity. Declare your miracle. Declare. Do 
like this move your hands and say i'm free i am free no more limits yes run from the end one end to another i am going far no more speed limits no more speed limits no more limitations yes 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 run and say yes 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 speed may god give you speed give you acceleration yes 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 speed acceleration yes yeah 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 Fire! Makahutabala! Revival! I feel the anointing. Glory! Shakabaka! Jesus! Can you jump? Can you jump? Say thank you, Jesus. I'm free. Everyone jump, jump. Can you sing this? Can you sing a song of dancing? Hallelujah! Let's go. I want you to dance a little bit. Hallelujah. 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 There is a race that I must run. Glory, glory. I want some people to come in front and celebrate. Celebrate your freedom. There is a race that I must run. Celebrate your deliverance from Hallelujah.
what a service. What a night we had. If I've ever appreciated online, it was today. <laughs> because I had to, to, to listen to and watch the whole service while I was driving. Are we still online? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why, why, why I was driving at a certain speed. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, um, uh, Prophet, for such a powerful word. And we give the Lord the honor. And if you were delivered tonight, can we give the Lord the best praise ever? <laughs> Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Even, even the prophecies released here, they're just spot on. <laughs> you know, very, very accurate in terms of certain areas we already know. <laughs> you know, so we really give the Lord the praise that what we also learning is that it is still a prophecy even if it was given in your absence <laughs> it still hit the target Amen. hallelujah Amen. Oh, come on let's give the lord the praise let's give him honor oh what a faithful god what a faithful god what a gracious god praise the lord hallelujah so we love the Lord and, and, and God bless you. And our online can stop. Um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We, we haven't taken the offering here tonight, have we? Let, let, let's go ahead and just take the offering. And God bless you. I, I, while while, while, while uh, Bishop was still ministering here, uh, uh, the Lord said there are some people who are giving their tithe and you've been giving but you're not seeing the fruit. But specifically he pointed to this particular group. People who are giving their tithe but they are not proud of their tithe. They are not proud of their tithe. You need to display it. You need to be so proud that you are not scared to give your tithe in public. And the Lord will bless you in public. He will do things for you that everybody will begin to see. Hallelujah. So as we are giving here, be proud of your giving. Give confidently and without any shame. Hallelujah. Give without any shame. And the Lord will bless you greatly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, it's only in the line of prayer where the Bible says, of course, we have many prayers that are recorded in the word. But where the Bible says, your father who hears or sees in secret will bless you publicly. But when it comes to giving, ah, everybody that's giving is publicly displayed. <laughs> You know, we are told of people that are giving and, you know, it's just exposed and released. So be proud of your giving as in the same spirit as we celebrate the Lord. Let's go ahead. Let's take our positions already to take the offering and, and, and confidently so. The swiping machine is available, but just with great confidence, come and give unto the Lord and be proud. Don't suffocate what you are giving to God. Be proud of what you are bringing to God. Hallelujah. You don't need to hide it. <laughs> Unless you are not proud of it. <laughs> God bless you. Shini glemi lenge, shini glemi lenge, ya kuchina mina. Shini glemi lenge, shini glemi lenge, ya 